Anyway, govern yourself accordingly. It's 10.05 at WIOD on a wonderful Tuesday. We have one of our rare guests in the studio is busy making a lot of noise. With don't, don't mess with the microphone, Tom, please. No, it, these are just, uh, that's just the way they are. Don't ask me why. Oh, okay. It's just that they're, like, balanced, you know, <clears throat> as opposed to our engineers who are mostly unbalanced. Anyway, Tom Jick is here. Tom is the radio and TV editor for the Fort Lauderdale News and Sun Sentinel. And before we get started with Tom, uh, just as an addendum to our discussion yesterday that carried over all the way till 6 o'clock on Steve Kane's show with the Norman Kent, uh, there are two articles that I see, one in the Broward edition of the Herald this morning and one in the uh, Sun Sentinel by Buddy Nevins. Mm-hmm. And all I can say to you folks at the Hollywood Police Department is you really think you're fooling people, but you're not, okay? Uh, David Steele, spokesman for the Hollywood Police Department, says that the sworn affidavit filed by the manager of the theater that we talked about yesterday says we find the allegations to be completely false. The article in the Herald quotes the Hollywood spokesman saying we have no idea what they're talking about, etc. I'd like uh, you to recall any situation in South Florida over the last 20 years when a police department has admitted wrongdoing on the part of any individuals, even when there are shootings, no matter what kind of situation it might be. Uh, the beginning is always this defensive posture, this immediate cover-up, because that's basically the way it goes, whether it's police, whether it's doctors or lawyers. Let's cover up. Let's take some uh, sand and shovel it over the top and bury it as best we can and pretend that there's nothing going on. And the people who heard uh, Norm Kent read the sworn affidavit yesterday know damn well that nobody in his right mind could possibly conjure up such an incredible story, in addition to which, attached to the copies of the affidavit is a copy of the... It's a picture of the business card of the officer who made the alleged bribes, okay? Now, why in the world does an officer of a vice squad give his business card to somebody he's just arrested? Unless, of course, he wants to give him his phone number and beeper number, etc., and to try to set somebody up, which in this case happened to be me. So you may think you're fooling somebody over there at the Hollywood Police Department. I had a call from a lady before I came on the air this morning with her own horror story as to the behavior of the Hollywood Police Department. And it, it's legendary, and uh, quite frankly, based on some of the material that uh, uh, Norm Ken showed me yesterday. So, like I said, you may think you're fooling people, you may think you can cover it up for the time being, but um, just govern yourselves accordingly is the best thing that I can <laughs> Awful say. lot of smoke for there to be no fire, isn't yeah. there? Yeah. Mm-hmm. Awful mm-hmm. lot of smoke. But you just knew that they would never fess up to this or, you know, make any uh, accusations against one of their own. Yeah, would and break Broward, it would break Broward County... Uh, was there going to be an investigation? Attorney also, no, it says the Broward State Attorney's Office was sent a copy to review, but Chief Assistant Ralph Ray said the affidavit doesn't appear to allege any crime on the part of the police officer. Ray, however, said he hadn't talked yet with the attorney, Norman Kent. Uh, Mr. Ray, if you're listening, and I doubt that you are, but somebody in the Broward State Attorney's Office probably is, or will get back to him. Uh, if it is legal in this state for police officers to, to to bribe people and to offer them special treatment in order to set up crimes where there wouldn't have been any, uh, this isn't this isn't just uh, giving somebody money for a tip. This is trying to set somebody up, try to create a fictitious crime where there wasn't any. And if that's legal, then we don't live in a democracy. We live in a totally fascist state. Okay. Yeah, the next step from there is just to arrest you when no crime has yeah. been committed and make That's up the a, crime yeah, make entirely. It up themselves, which certainly wouldn't be the first time, I would imagine, that kind yeah. of thing's been done. Well, this is part of the atmosphere that's been created. Yeah. Well, we want to talk uh, mostly about radio and TV as usual, but I know that you have been the target of this uh, witch hunt. And, you know, again, it's a legitimate news story because there have been God only knows how many articles about it now the past three, four weeks. And uh, you had a real interesting... Now, it's 20 months for me. Uh, you had one week... Yeah, it was Hell Week, uh, I guess, back in October. Uh, it was it October? I, I did the show with you, the morning show, and uh, you know, it, it's the old story: if you're not my ally, you're my enemy. And because I was, I perceived uh, this relationship that we have, this friendship. Well, I, do, I think we do have a friendship. Uh, I, I became the target of this, and and it got really ugly. I mean, even to the extent of uh, when we looked like I was going to be out of work when the Miami News was folding, and and then you announced on the air that I had gotten a new job. Uh, steps were taken to try and short circuit that job. I mean, I would have been out in the street, no way to support my family. And and best I know, the only the only crime I committed was not falling in line on this witch hunt. But uh, letters were sent and uh, really ugly letters, uh, trying to get me to lose the the only job offer I had at the time. I would have had no way of supporting myself and my family. And what did I do? Well, the only thing I know is that I. Like I say, we have a friendship, and uh, I didn't fall in line on this uh, witch hunt. 
Well, what did the letters say? That well, they, Mauro, they, they alleged all kinds of things and suggested that I was, uh, uh, to paraphrase, unprofessional, reckless, irresponsible. Uh, I think my reputation well, even in the before community... Well, even before you're coming here today, when you stopped in briefly last week, and I mentioned, you know, we invited you to come on here today as a guest, within one day there were letters from this individual in Coral Gables uh, to the Sun Sentinel making all sorts of threats and... Uh, uh, so well, I don't know if they were threats, but they, it was again, it was the usual innuendo. Well, and when one, says yeah, that I guess the they assets of your yeah. company are going to be on yeah. the line for what Tom Jicker says next Tuesday. To me, those are threats. Yeah, and, and that, well, that that's standard procedure. That's happened every now in, in during the course of this thing. Uh, just about every time I've appeared on the air, it's been preceded by a letter to both me and my immediate superiors. This case, I didn't get the letter. I don't know why I didn't get it this time. I have a suspicion why, but I can't get into that. Uh, and. Uh, I didn't get it, but letters have gone out to my superiors just about in advance and then after every appearance I've made. And, and then all, all sorts of other things, that r letters written to people encouraging them to sue me for, for innocent satiric remarks that were made in the spirit of fun on the program, but they, they were taken out of context. Uh, and and sent to uh, to these people, encouraging them to to file lawsuit defamation lawsuits against me, uh, and uh, the the suits, uh, according to the attorney I spoke to at the news, uh, just had no no basis at all. He said, but they could they could force me they could cost me a fortune to defend myself. Mm -hmm. And, yeah, and, see, and this, this is this is, is the, the way the law part is of the twisted. game plan of this abuse of the legal system is to continue um, encouraging or uh, starting litigation. Uh, and forcing other people to have to use their life savings to defend themselves against specious litigation. This is one of the real farces and injustices of our legal system, is that somebody who has a knowledge of and workings of the legal system can do that. And it's strictly abuse. And again, how long it's going to take the Florida bar to determine that they're going to put a stop to it remains to be seen. You know, what, I would hope it wouldn't be too long. I had to laugh the last ten minutes on Mike's show. I heard there was an ad from the Florida bar on the station, which means that I, I guess they're going to get a letter oh, from them too, like everyone else who advertises <laughs> wow. on the station. Themselves accordingly. Yeah, I mean, Great. I'm sure there has to. Everyone else who advertises yeah. on the station seems to get letters from this individual. So I suppose that the Florida bar is going to get one next, and and that might be interesting. He might, you know, he might, he might even aid in his own paper trail. I don't know. We can't okay, leave. Okay, let me uh, do a little break. Ten thirteen at W I D. What was that? <laughs> what did he say? Uh, the that, that was Ed. Ed. Yeah, yeah that was Ed, but I thought he was going to say something coherent. And he said, <laughs> "Well, I guess it kind of fits in with the weekend." So thanks so much. Anyway, Tom Jick is here, and the uh, interesting story. I don't know if you saw it. If I can find it, that Roger left for me about a Wart Downey Jr. And what the fact that now? they have uh, some of the sponsors are bailing out. Really? Well, I know he's some not of the a, language on the show. Well, yeah, and he's not, a, and his ratings are starting to slip, and he's not on the best of terms with the station here because he he more or less stiffed them. He was supposed to come down here for an appearance, and then he kept revising the schedule, and they had gone to a lot of expense to set the thing up. And uh, let me just read the thing from UPI. It says an advertising backlash has forced Morton Downey Jr. to tone down his language on the air. He says in the L.A. Times that he and Geraldo Rivera are on what he calls the hit list of about 80 advertisers who refuse to place commercials on their talk shows. Downey claims his producers are civilizing him and that his language is now completely controlled, but he says he won't get as watered down as Phil Donahue. KABC in Los Angeles is dropping Downey's show. Huh. Well, that sounds familiar, doesn't it, that whole scenario? Yeah. Well, yeah, but I mean, the question is just how far can you go? Well, that, that's, so that's, that's the, that's the other interesting question. thing about this this whole witch hunt thing is that it, you know it, it seems fairly obvious that it's personal because there are things far more risque and 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 mm -hmm. and raunchy all well, over the dial uh, yeah. and uh, yeah a current affair just puts everything else to shame when it comes to that uh, so, <laughs> yeah I so I don't you know it's obvious that that what's going on with this program has little basis to do with cleaning up the airwaves and it, it seems no because even after we sanitize it and take all the material off that allegedly was objectionable to this one individual which which to me is insane i just don't know how anybody in their right mind with any conscience at all uh just kind of bends and yields to one person in an area of four million people but even when you do it there are new things you yeah. know whether it's the westminster dog show or whether it's the governor of georgia or whatever it is well, what about me just, whether it's uh, tom jicka mm -hmm. and the sun sentinel whether it's buddy nevins uh, there are just new boogeymen that come along every day to continue every the day. witch hunt. It just never, ever stops. Never even slows down. 
Well, it, you know, that you talk about that expression, get a life. <laughs> you know, some people have strange choices of what they want to do with their life. And I got uh, a nice fax from John Patrick Slater at WTMI this morning, which I think is the first uh, piece of supportive correspondence we've had from anybody in the business mm -hmm. that I can remember. I mean, we've had some phone calls from um, uh, Cox and uh, Sonny Fox and Tanner and so on. But this is the first uh, letter that I can recall. Nice letter from. Well, it's in the interest of the entire industry to fall in line. I think behind you, uh, it, uh, this goes back to a conversation I had with Steve Kane the week before you were here, and you know, at the time, Steve had a different relationship, and uh, I said, Steve, I'm warning you. You're going to see. You're going to be. A, you're going to be the next target. Ah, oh, no, no, you got it all wrong. I said, Steve, believe me, you'll be the next target. And we both know since then, Steve has uh, come to me and said, You were right. Mm -hmm. And. Uh, uh, you know, I, I, I to, to take things to absurd lengths, I, I assume that if, if somehow, you know, that when the president comes to town, he takes his picture with just about everybody, you know, that they kind of rush up to him. Mm -hmm. I think if you, if you had your picture taken with the president, there might be sheets of letter going to the White House every day. <laughs> and, you know, the Republican National Party. I mean, that seems to be the pattern. Well, there are letters that were sent to the Secret Service back during the presidential campaign about uh, my comments about um, our illustrious vice president now. And I made some joke that everybody in, in broadcasting made the same illusions about quail hunting season. Mm -hmm. yeah. Letterman used it. Carson used it on national television, no less. Yeah. But when I used it on a local radio here in Miami, letter was sent by this individual to the Secret Service suggesting that I was encouraging attacks on the vice presidential candidate's life, et cetera, and so on, which they discarded. But, I mean, this, this should give the audience a real good idea of just how deep and uh, bizarre this whole thing has been. Well, I mean, there are just no, no bounds to it. It's just totally out of control. Well, right now, just from what I know, you're about the most investigated person on radio, and you've yeah. been given an absolutely clean bill of health by every mm -hmm. agent. I mean, you know, the state has investigated you, the FBI has investigated you, the FCC has investigated you. I mean, I'm just doing these off the top of my head. I might miss some. Uh, it seems to me that everyone who's launched an investigation into this program, what was the phrase in that letter that this individual perceives crimes where others don't or yeah. something to that effect? <laughs> yeah. So, you know, we're, we're talking about an army of one. And, yeah. uh, it, it's, but it's amazing, and it just shows you how one individual armed with the law can, can twist and, and, and do things like this and, uh, and, and do a lot of the things that he claims... That you do to him. I, I mean, these things about harassments and threats. I mean, look at the atmosphere. This thing with the Hollywood police force. You can't convince me that this isn't part of the, that the poisoned atmosphere against you didn't have at least oh, some sure. role in this. Look at the language in this affidavit that we talked about yesterday where the uh, detective allegedly said, Neil is probably there to pick up some young boys. Now, doesn't yeah. that sound familiar to you, uh, the uh, trolling for young well, boys? Well, first of all, there aren't any young boys. That was the thing that struck me. You have to be 18 to years be old to go in. Yeah. Right. Mm -hmm. So, uh, and, but nonetheless, uh, like you say, this is the poisoned atmosphere that's been created. And, of course, uh, you know, it expanded to the city of Hallandale, which was an embarrassing episode for them again. Well, sure, I mean, they, they, want, they don't want to admit it and fess up to it, but it was another tragic embarrassment for them again. Well, it, they just don't understand that. And an embarrassment for the university in that, in that rag, the hurricane, which supposedly, you know... Uh, to teach kids something about journalism, another horrendous embarrassment, to the point where uh, the president of the university says all the allegations in that last article are untrue, and they all came from the lips of that individual again. Well, and, and, that, and that's what's happening. Everyone who seems to, to ally themselves with, with this person for at least even a brief period winds up with egg in their face. And so, so I think what's going to happen is that the circle is going to start to close that uh, people are going to start keeping their distance because they don't want to wind up uh, being embarrassed or humiliated. Well, you had a week, and I'll never forget, you were really um, oh, I was really psychotic during that and, week. And it was week. not because of anything I had did. It was because of the lack of backing that I got at the Miami News, yeah. which was just scared to death because they were going out of business and they wanted to break clean. Like the lawyer that got involved said to me, Tom, you didn't do anything at all wrong, but, you know, what do we need this aggravation but, yeah. for? We're going out but. of business. This could cost seventy-five to $100,000 dollars before you'd be cleared, and you would be absolutely clear. It was just a, a stupid, innocent, uh, it was a satiric remark, which, you know, like you said, it, it's, it's almost comical. Well, see, the game plan is to create enough problem and enough litigation exactly. so that it costs mm -hmm. your employer so much money and so much grief that no matter how talented you are or how much of an asset you are, eventually they just say, hey, nobody is worth this much grief, right. and they come to you and they say, well, listen, we're sorry for this and everything else, but good luck and goodbye. Exactly. And that's, that's the ultimate goal. And, of the, and the, minute that, the minute that you announced on the air that I was going to Fort Lauderdale, boom, the letters went up there. I mean, what, what, this is a Christian? 
pretty sad. Okay, let me do another break, and then we'll talk about the radio and TV. It's 22 minutes. We have the trends, by the way. We've got every uh, number that's ever been invented from Friday. If you can digest God, all of this stuff, like the phone book. You, but there, yeah, it is. Anyway, uh, 26 past 10 at WIOD. And uh, you got all the trends there in yeah, front of you boy, now. We sure, expect boy, an instant like, analyzation of yeah. all these numbers now from the Arbitrends. It's like looking through the phone book, you know, and trying to come up with a number, opening a page and putting your finger to it. Well, let me just give you the, so the big story in the book is Hot 105. Make no yeah. mistake. Well, they were last week, too. Yeah. At all, but now they went through the roof. They got, I think, a 7-3 or something. Yeah. And uh, Keith Isley's done a great job over there. With his, with his colored pants. With his that colored pants. <laughs> well, that's that's what does it. He's going to be a hot You watch. The all market. the PDs in the market are going to go out and order crayons and colored pens because that seems to work. He, know, he knows what he's doing. He did a great Isn't job he? at I-95. And they didn't get along with Gannett, which I can certainly relate to because they're a bunch of douchebags. And, uh, you know, they let him walk, just like they let it's us amazing. walk. Amazing. You know, I you mentioned know? that the last time I did a rating story, that, you know, that you could just trace the, pe the people that they've let walk away yeah, from there. Yeah, Stan what Major, Keith Simpson. Isley, us. You know, all we did was number one in men with an 8-8, eight, eight, and I think we were number two overall in men with a 5-8. The only station that beat us was Life, which is elevator music, and nobody even counts. Well, they've, they've got it where they want it down there in the ones, though, don't they? At Zeta, yeah. one six in the morning, they, and a one six overall. The yeah. Yeah. They're mm -hmm. thrilled. Oh, yeah. they're just thrilled. Oh, come on. They're not thrilled. You keep saying that. They're not <laughs> thrilled. They've got to be suicidal over there. Don't say that they're thrilled. Well, a one six. I mean, there's just no story there at all. All across the board, they got like one six, one six, one seven. Gonzo, I think, did a one five because he always has to be a little below everybody else. <laughs> but, uh, you know, and that's it. There's no story there at all whatsoever. Well, there's no audience there at no, all either. No, they've lost, you know, the young, young demographics where we were in one category, I think it was 18 to 34 men, or 18 to 34, we were number one. Yeah. And yeah. in two months, they've dropped to number 19. They've dropped from an 11-something to a 2-8. Yeah, I mean... Now, it know. takes special talent to be able to do that. <laughs> yeah, one six. there it is. It mm -hmm. tied, for, tied for 22nd. Out oh, yeah, of I put it all there in front of you, right in uh, out Black of 30, and Playful. Yeah, so I mean... People don't think we're hallucinating or, or exaggerating. one six is... It's almost off the. I mean, you know, KAT used to yeah, get those kind of For a signal like that, it's pretty embarrassing. You know, hundred thousand watts. Especially, of especially that was only what three months ago was up in the fours. And GTR went back up through the roof again. They went from a two eight back to a three nine. They got rid of that one fluke month. You know, the mm -hmm. well, it's where the books fall. happen. Yeah, yeah. where the diaries I mean, you, fall. You get a bad month. And, uh, and they uh, undersampled young men in Broward, yeah, I think it was, in that one to, month. And as a result, they got a yeah. real uh, screwing. But then, you know, it comes... Well, you can almost tell it. If, if you see big ratings for the Latin stations, then you know that Miami was probably oversampled. Yeah. Uh, because it, there, there certainly is a market for the Latin stations, but if, if all of a sudden they just have an atypical jump... Why don't we just have a separate ethnic book? Why I can't agree. you guys in a meeting Well, I heard they were going to do that. No, tell I, them, look, I, just, I, just cut this out and have the... The black stations and the Spanish stations have them in a separate ethnic book. And well, I disagree with that. I don't think the black stations should be separate because they're they're broadcasting in the same language. I mean, I could see a white yeah, but person they have listening a specialized to specialized ethnic market. People that want to people that want to attract the black market are going to buy WEDR. If they don't, they're nuts because I mean that's where most of the black audience is. Oh yeah, but rock and roll started on black stations, and there are white people that listen to black stations, and and you could conceive of a white person listening to a black station. Yeah. You can't conceive of an Anglo listening to QBA. Yeah, that's true. I mean, that's a good point. They, they just you know it's inaccessible to them. They don't know what's going on. Even if they were listening to your commercial, they would have no idea what you were saying. Mm -hmm. So I I see. Yeah, that that to me is a separate area. They're against it because they they want to compete for the same national advertisers, the beer companies, the car mm -hmm. companies. That's why they don't want it segregated. But no, I agree with you entirely. I think they should have their own book. They're doing a different thing than what you're doing. You're not competing for the same audience. Yeah, but people, don't national advertisers, if they want to buy ethnic, don't they don't they have a separate buy for well, that? Well, I think they look. We're not competing they, they for probably the same dollars. If they want to buy the Hispanic audience, they're not going to uh, take some dollars that they would put on IOD or GTR or somebody like that and put it over on QBA. Yeah, they have separate I, dollars. And I think their buyers probably look at the book and go, okay, who's the number one Spanish yeah. station? Who's the number one Spanish radio uh, uh, music station? Who's the number one? Because if you're going to do Spanish, particularly Spanish talk, the, the demographics for that are just, you know, ancient. I'm, you know, the, the, at least the, the ones that are, you know, going all day long about taking the island back. I mean, who's listening? 65, 70-year-old people? Although QBA, I see, went up quite a bit in this book. Radio Mambi, for whatever reason, with that big signal, they started with a big number and they've dropped way down. They're doing a 3A, I think. Well, you just have to wonder, even, even among Latins, uh, the, how long you're going to sit listening to the same thing day after day after day after day about communist colonista, <laughs> dictator Castro, and blah, blah, blah. But they blah, still blah, all do very well. And their audience well. dies. They all do very well. I mean, but, uh, you know, that's the fallacy, though. We keep hearing about the assimilation that's going on and about uh, the fact that the Spanish-language stations just aren't going to continue doing so well. 
and most of them are doing pretty darn well. You well, look in some of the categories there, and you'll see the first three stations will be Spanish language stations. Well, I, it's it's only my feeling. I can't prove it, but I think that the same factor that works against you works for them. That I think that there's a certain pressure within the Latin community to put down that they're listening to Latin stations, even oh, yeah, if they're like not. Voting. The same as there are people who would never admit listening to this radio program, even though they are. It's amazing. You go out in the community and people you would never think of listening to this program. Uh, and, you know, I go somewhere and they go, hey, when are you going to be on Neil again? Or I heard you the other day on Neil. Or did mm -hmm. you hear what Neil did the other day? And it's just not the type of people. I mean, you, you think of people that you, you'd have to have a little bit of time. You, you, people that you know are working during the day, doctors, lawyers, dentists, bankers. You know, how do they have this program on? Well, apparently they do because they're aware of what's going on. Mm -hmm. And But yet, I don't think that's always reflected in the book for whatever reasons. Like, I know, just just take an absolutely absurd example. Suppose a book wound up in the hands of your friend. Do you think that he would fill in that he listened to this program? <laughs> no shot. But yet, we know that he's the well, most loyal. As an, as an I mean, honest born-again Christian, I would think that God would uh, Well, that's possibly to, true. That, that is honestly. possibly true, yes. I that think we hit a real bonanza there because uh, that would be four hours every day. For every day. <laughs> well, actually, week. you should get eight hours. The four hours listening and then the four hour playback when yeah. he's transcribing his notes. Yeah, we should get uh, credit for people who play it back and listen a second time. You're right. Come Kinda on, like, you're very You know, Mike, you get everything twice. Yeah. Ah. <laughs> Only he's able to do it in four and a half hours. Yeah. Anyway, uh, we had Craig Worthing on the air here uh, a few days ago, and of course, uh, I, I just wonder. That's wondered, a sad story. Yeah, I wonder if you found out any of the real story behind that at all. About well, I, I think it was Jesse. more an excuse than a. Uh, I, I think. Well, they have Sally Jesse sitting there now, right? And Sally Jesse's on live, so now if they start, if if all these rumors, which they claim are not true, they swear are not true, that they're going to get away from live talk and go to syndicated talk. Well, there's the first block right in place. They have Sally Jesse, and they've established a relationship. Uh, there's, there's a whole lineup of programs that ABC, ABC Info yeah. Information provides, mm -hmm. right? I mean, sure. you can get Michael Jackson out of L.A., mm -hmm. you know, and his brothers and his sister LaToya and <laughs> the snake and the whole bit. They could get them all on there. Uh, so so that would certainly be the first block in, in, the, in the progression. Now, uh, they claim that, uh, that, that they're committed. They say they've signed their, their people to new contracts. The people I've talked to, they're say that they've gotten contracts, although I've, I've lost some of my lines. Strange thing happened, by the way. I don't know that I'm persona non grata anymore on Sandy's show, but let me tell you something that happened. I was scheduled to be on about two weeks ago on a Friday, two or three uh -huh, weeks ago with, with Steve, Tanner. With Steve, no, no, I was on with Tanner. Uh -huh. With Steve Sotsky. They called me a long time ago, set the program up. I said, sure, you know, I'll do it. And uh, I got a call about a week before the program from the producer. And she said, uh, Tom, we're canceling the program. And I said, oh, I said, any reason? She said, no. We're just not doing it. So I said, oh, okay, fine. If you need me, call me. She said, okay, goodbye. And that day, uh, I turned the program on, and there's Steve Sonsky. We were supposed to do the program together. Mm -hmm. So, what goes around? <laughs> I, I, I guess maybe, uh, yeah, I, I don't know that I've done anything to, to annoy them or... Uh, or to get in their bad graces, but it sure it sure seems like it. You come on this show, but it'll be a long time before they call me the next time. Because one of the things that I've done, and, and you know it, and you know it when you're a producer, when I, when I give a commitment to mm -hmm. come somewhere, I do it even if it winds up, you know, tremendous inconvenience to myself. Right. And uh, they're certainly allowed to program their station any way they want. But you call me up on 48 hours notice and you cancel. Uh, well, then you know that I, I'm going to govern myself accordingly. Well, it's kind of like what happened to you here before I came over here uh, for a while when you were like... Um... Well, that was during Michael Anthony's time. Mm -hmm. Yeah. When, <laughs> you know, it was more or less a picture of me with a, with a yeah. bright <laughs> underneath it <laughs> hanging on the door. 1034 at WIOD. Tom Jick is with us today. If you haven't eaten at the Melting Pot. 1039 at WIOD. Tom Jick is here. Tom is the uh, radio and TV writer for the Florida, the Florida, <laughs> the Fort Lauderdale News and Sunset. <laughs> well, listen, it's branching out before you know it. <laughs> we're growing. Um, no, I, I had this other fax that I forgot about from Foxy 1040. I don't even know what Foxy is, no. okay? It shows... Radio stations. Yeah. yeah. Where the... Well, I know it, that. Is it in Palm Beach? No, it says uh, serving Palm Beach, Broward, and Dade with 10,000 watts. Mm -hmm. On oh, Delray Beach. Delray. I don't and know just a note from station. Gary Lewis at Foxy 1040. says, thanks for including Foxy 1040 in your rating report. <laughs> they're listening so they're to really it. a Palm Beach County station, but there's a thing there in the bottom that's got the listing of all the top 37 stations. And amazingly, the motivation station 
didn't make the cut. <laughs> well, isn't that an ir irony? I mean, here they claim that they're teaching people to be motivated, and they can't motivate anybody to listen to their radio station. <laughs> well, they get so motivated, they have no time for the radio. Yeah, they're all out yeah. making a fortune. Yeah, they're all out there listening to Earl Nightingale or doing something. <laughs> but, uh, yeah, you know, the thing about talking about the ratings, and, I, you know, I do it in a very biting way because there are a lot of people in the market, a lot of stations that I'm not particularly fond of, but we don't lie about them. I mean, whatever the numbers, the numbers are, are, we there give them honestly. And, white, you certainly... and uh, the station that you just talked about, WOLD, um, you know, maybe they don't want you to come on because you know what the numbers are, or at least you generally have a pretty good uh, grasp of what, what they are. And uh, they, they can't stand the truth. They can't handle the fact that most of their audience is now over 65, uh, that even those numbers, I mean, they're just dropping like a rock. They've gone from that fluke five something that they had in the summertime down to a three two. Uh, and they're just dropping like a well, rocket. Well, I figure they're mean, down they're everywhere. getting ganged up on here. They didn't have the competition that they had before. That's correct. And, uh, it, there's just there's, a, there's some excitement about this station while there is. And, they, you know, it's just like you said, you know, I know you make jokes about them, but they're saying, you know, let's do another show on gun control. Mm hmm. Ah, it's obsessed. Uh, you know, well, man. there are some people who want to cling to those old, you know, abortion and gun control and all those tried and true topics. And I am telling you, the burnout of the public. Is just legendary. It's just that they don't want to hear that crap anymore. They've heard it a million well, times. Well, there's no sense in it. Is like there anything, head against is the there anything left no, to be said about there's it? There's nothing. And are you no, going to change anybody's mind on gun no, control? No, there's, no, there'll never be. Not in our lifetime will there ever be any meaningful gun control. Maybe not in our grandchildren's lifetimes. It, it just, it's not going to happen. We'll all wind up killing ourselves before they, they ever do anything sensible. I mean, a previous with president gets shot, you know, by, by a maniac who, you know, goes out and gets a gun in a pawn shop. And he still doesn't change his mind, man. All for the NRA. And the current president, he's just as much gung-ho well, NRA. And he does, you know, semi-automatic. When I heard that, that he, let's not take away their assault weapons. Well, sure. I mean, if you're going to go out hunting or target shooting, you got to have an assault weapon. I mean, no arsenal's <laughs> complete without it. That's for sure. At least a couple of Uzis in the arsenal, I mean, anyway. Isn't everybody entitled to that? I mean, if you take away our Uzis, what's next? Our but you can't, you can't reason or? with the people on that side. So it's really, it's, it's just an exercise in futility. And it, it isn't exciting because no matter how much the people disagree, it's all been said a million times before. And, and yeah, there's no, the same arguments again and again and again. And you get you know the, the the pro call up with their with their constitutional argument, and the antis come on and they say, well, yeah, the Constitution says to keep a militia, and it's the same argument. It never ever changes. And as far as abortion goes, abortion is not going to be decided on talk radio. It's going to be decided in the courts. And when they do a, then they do outlaw abortion, and it certainly seems it's going that way. What's going to happen is people are just going to keep having them illegally again. And mm -hmm. then you know then we'll have the abortion police the same way as we now have the mind police and the radio radio police and the movie police and the television police will have the abortion police. But nothing's going to change. All right, what about uh, Y100? We heard a rumor yesterday. Did you start that rumor? Yes, that the, I did. Uh, I ten year old program director may be on his way out. Steve. Is the popular rumor, Steve. The uh, guy they just hired? Yeah, no, that's, yeah, a few more. Yeah, yeah he's, he's been there. Well, the station is not doing well. To give exactly. I find it interesting that uh, the television ads where, they, where we, well, we were going to give away 15000 and then, you know, they, they, they dumped Steve Ross into a shoot or something, yeah, and, yeah. 20, and they're, argue, they're arguing over 15000 or 20000 and didn't, didn't Sonny Fox get more or less canned for, uh, for what amounted to peanuts, a plane ticket or something like that? <laughs> Wasn't that, the, wasn't that the deal? Was I don't know, know what the real reason was. Well, I think he was it, making it, too much money. And they well, yeah, it was an excuse looking for a place yeah. to happen. Mm -hmm. But uh, I think the immediate catalyst was over the way a contest would be run or dispensed or something like that. Is that the excuse? I just don't, well, you know, you hear these stories secondhand. Sonny won't talk about them. But, uh, you know, you, you, people at the station call up and volunteer information and things like that. And mm -hmm. my understanding is it had something to do with a contest. And the, Sonny wanted to run it one way, and they wanted to run it another way. And, and the, uh, the amount of the, the prize in, in dispute was really pe peanuts. You know, in, other, in most other major markets, there are stations that they, they kind of like step out from the pack, like in a horse race. They just come out, take the lead, and they pull away, and they stay there for a long time. And you can go through all the major markets. I mean, there, there are a lot of markets where there's a close horse race, but there are one or two dominant stations. In this market, it's like watching a yo-yo. And all the different stations, they bounce up and back and back and forth. Like except you Life. Audio uh, wallpaper. Well, no, except Life, because naturally they've got a captive audience in all the elevators and dentists and doctor's <laughs> offices. So, you know, that, that, that it shouldn't even count. It shouldn't even be in any book, because nobody is consciously listening to Life. There is no, nobody who's paying any music. attention. It's strictly <laughs> subliminal. Yeah, I agree. So if you're an Excuse advertiser that. and you're you right. want to pay your money for somebody who might in the background hear... Well, maybe it's subliminal, you know, like they used to do, eat popcorn exactly. in the theaters. Maybe it works. Who maybe knows? Maybe it does. But anyway, that, that's a whole separate ballgame. 
But other than that, it's just this constant yo-yo syndrome. And I think the big part of it is real bad management in this market. And I've worked for a lot of these different companies. And I'm, I'm telling you, man, they bring in these these yo-yos who don't know their, their armpit from their elbow. And uh, it's bad management. And they all bring in these consultants who you know are guys who can't get an honest job in the market. So go around screwing up everybody else's station. And when somebody hires consultants, man, it's like them admitting to me right to my face, hey, we don't know what the hell we're well, doing. Well, consultants never had an original idea, almost by definition. They only know what's worked somewhere else. Yeah. And, you know, as far as Y100 goes, their entire back, they've been built on, on a, a foundation of sand, giving away money. They came to the market. I, I remember I moved to the market just about at the time when they, they went on the air with, when they okay. had that gimmick. I listened to the new sound of Y100 and it was right. $50,000. That, that was when $50,000 was $50,000. I would, you know, probably the equivalent now would be about $200,000. Mm -hmm. uh, and, uh, they gave away money, and they're back to giving away money. And Buying if you want to buy an audience, yeah. well, I suppose you can do that. But yeah, it's, I, I think that the way they put the station on the air was positively brilliant because there was a period back then when everybody in Miami was aware of I listen to the new sound of Y100. And because were it answering was their money. phones That's that right. way. You if bet. anyone can believe that. It was that. positively brilliant, but yeah. you can't keep that going over a long period of right. time. I don't, eventually, you can get the people into the tent, but then you've got to have the show to keep them in the tent. And that's, it seems like every time they get into trouble, they just come up with more money giveaways instead of trying to get a solid format that would make that unnecessary. Well, that's called throwing money at the problem. Yeah. That's what they do over there. By the way, I'll tell you an interesting consultant story. I was talking to a friend of mine, Bo Rains, who's up at 98 Rock in Tampa yesterday, who called me for a job reference. Or a job. No, not for no. me, but a reference on someone he was hiring. And anyway, he said to me... Um, did you ever talk to the uh, classic rock consultant there at Zeta Alex, or wh whatever his name was? And I said, wait a minute. I said, you mean he's the consultant now at Zeta? And he says, oh, yeah. You know, and I said, well, you know, we used to, when Neil and I were there, we were consulted by Harris, and Chris Gable was in, and we used to just rip them on the air about consultants and how they don't know anything. And, you know, they're just, that station had no ratings, and we just, you know, roasted the consultants. Well, finally, they got rid of Harris brought this guy in and remember i went up to rose folger one day and i said is this the new consulting oh no 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 this is the marketing yeah guy they, they used a different name for it because he was too, embar <laughs> well, whoever's too embarrassed to admit that they hired another <laughs> consultant because the word is so smarmy yeah. to begin with and so embarrassing that they just don't like to admit that they even hire consultants <laughs> well the, whoever's consulting on that music couldn't have lived through that period because they don't have a clue what, what's right. classic. Now, isn't that got to be one of the great mysteries of all time? Forgetting about whether you like him as a person or not, because he's a likable guy, but Bolger's been there... Oh, yeah. Two years. Two years. I found him very pleasant as a person. Yeah. Mm -hmm. but, but in terms of total failure, with the exception of our show, which is now history... Uh, there is no success story at all anywhere on that radio station in two years, and now they're right back there below where they were when we went there a year and a half ago. Mm. Well, they're below. They were at a 1.7. Now they're down to a 1.6. Okay. Well, when they say that, you know, they were really happy that you were leaving because now they, that let them, yeah. you know, get things in order. Yeah, well, <laughs> gonna get, they turn the you corner. Know, it's like a guy who wins the lottery, you know, a, a guy who's living at the Camilla's house winning the lottery and then losing the check and going, well, gee, I was happy the other way anyway. What yeah. was I going to do with all that? Oh, God. It's but how long incredible. can that go on? I don't know. How long can well, WINZ you keep and Zeta continue stories about a possible fumbling sale. along? they got no demographics. They have no, the FM has no measurable audience to speak of. How long can they keep subsidizing that? Well, I don't know, and, and that's why you keep here. I think that's why these rumors keep popping up about a possible sale. But over there have there. been rumors about, listen, I worked there for almost five years. There have been rumors about those two, two stations being sold, and they came real close, as you mm -hmm. know, to being sold yeah. a couple of years ago. And it just uh, it doesn't happen. Well, there's a lot of factors that work. One of the problems is that they probably want, now I'm just interjecting this with no, no real inside information, but uh, they probably asking a price that would justify a station with maybe a 4 or 5 rating, when the meanwhile they're delivering a station with a 1.6 rating. Who's going to pay that kind of money? They have a good signal, they have a good facility. Uh, well, they have a reasonably good signal, at least on the on the FM they have a good signal. Mm -hmm. The AM might have The AM problems. has the best daytime signal in the state of Florida. Yeah, but at night it's kind of dicey. Well, at night, but nobody sells nighttime radio. So night, at, after 7 p.m., forget it. Radio is not a factor anymore. Yeah. It doesn't exist.
Well, that's not, I, I don't think that's true at this station. I think oh, they do very I, well in the I unions. I disagree with you. Really? If you were to if you were to ask Even Mike with the business, baseball they're making the money. Talk? They're making money on nighttime radio. I think he he couldn't tell you. Yes, I could be wrong on that, but I don't think there's any AM station in the country that's making money, or maybe even FM. Well, they're the just, seven, the male demos don't buy, on the first baseball. First of all, national advertisers don't buy nighttime. Most local and regional agencies don't buy nighttime. Well, and they do in the in the sports though. The, you, you get the beer companies and things like that looking for male demos. You can sell some think, of that. I think I think all of that sports is basically packaged together with the Dolphins and the Hurricanes and all the other sports on the station, and it's just kind of part of an image. I don't think that it's there because it's making anybody a lot of money. I could be wrong on that, but I don't think so. Yeah. Okay, it's 10.50, 10 before 11 at WIOD. Tom Jicka is with us, and I want to tell you about... OD. Okay, now you don't want to tell that story on the air. No, 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 that one will 10.54 at WIOD. <laughs> <laughs> Tom Jicka is here. Tom is the uh, troublemaker at the Fort Lauderdale News and Sun Sentinel. Please, don't say that. That'll and, wind up in uh, a letter. <laughs> okay, well, there's, there's really not a Even lot more... Neil Rogers was quoted as yeah, saying Tom exactly. Jicker is a troublemaker. But that's a compliment. I suppose. Because the Sun Sentinel, for a long time there, their image was being kind of boring. Mm-hmm. Well, I, you know, I, boring. I, this is going to sound like tingling, but I've been there two months, and I, I'm just, I'm really impressed at the way the place is run, with the people who run it. They, they know what they're doing. They have a goal. Uh... I find the paper to be, you know, just a paper on the move and a move in the right direction. And a little too Palm Beach County oriented, but that's okay. I know. Did you notice Tom didn't say? No, it's got nothing. <laughs> it was a good excuse to avoid that. No. Well, it, oh, we gee. serve both this. markets. This is a letter I mean, to what paper? The Hallandale Digest. Boy, we're at it again. Uh, can I read this on the air? Well, it's in public print. Dear Editor, there was a letter printed in the February 16th Hallandale Digest from a David Murvies, M-E-R-V-E-S, that I am upset with Neil Rogers for his abusive and obscene language, but the other day he heard me yell at the tennis courts, give us the G blank blank ball, will you, and suggest that I ought to clean up my act before criticizing others. The topic of conversation the next day at the tennis courts was, who is David Mervis? Nobody has ever seemed to have heard of him. First, there's quite a difference between saying G blank blank ball and the language Neil Rogers uses. Second, when I want a ball returned to the tennis courts, I call thank you on court such and such, and when the ball is returned, I always say thank you. Third, saying I yell around the tennis courts, give us the G blank blank ball is a G blank blank lie. Uh, sincerely, sincerely, Arthur J. Sonny Rosenberg, Mayor City, Hallandale. Now, i got to tell you, <laughs> this has got to be... No, we're missing out on something because this has got to be a tremendous place to live because when the mayor of the city has got nothing better to do than take the time to write a letter, a supercilious letter like this, a goddamn stupid letter like this, <laughs> to the Hallandale Digest, well, it's and election sit around in, in the city commission meetings trying to, you know, do a w- little witch hunts against Neil Rogers and against this radio station, then it must be, no wonder they call it the city of choice. There must be no crime and no <laughs> drugs and no problems and no jaywalking and no traffic problems. Nothing. Everything there must be perfect. Well, you know, it's election time. And one way, yeah, how do you get attention in Hallandale? Well, one good way to get attention is to take on somebody big. And they took on, you know, the biggest person in the market. they went through it before, and it was an embarrassment for them and a humiliation. And they did it again, and they had to go Doesn't with their tails between Neil. your legs again. And, Doesn't of course, they matter. tried to blame me for that, does but it's every, their own stupidity. Does, does every old person in Hallandale know that Sonny Rosenberg was fighting for their interests? Oh, and, absolutely. And election day well, is course, coming up. And that's how they get in. They, they anyone know who's running the Claude Pepper syndrome. They pander to a certain constituency over the age of 100. They know that those are the only people that go out and vote because there's certainly nothing else to vote on in a city like that. And these are the ones that put them back into office well, over isn't and over Well, is that the whole again. idea? Does anyone know who Sonny Rosenberg is even running against? No, I haven't got any not. idea. But everyone knows who Sonny Rosenberg is. Yeah. Isn't, that's the whole idea of politics. Hmm. I, I, it's the same as every time there's a municipal election in Miami, they clean up the prostitution on my on, on my on Biscayne mm-hmm. Boulevard. Oh yeah, it's the same old routine. And then you'll sure. see some you know public official, be it the police chief or the mayor or some assistant mayor or something, they'll be on television re- reminding people that we're doing this. You almost get the feeling that law enforcement has become kind of a public relations game, and they only do it when it's expedient. For example, you well, know, that go, was back, the to years. go back briefly to this thing in Hollywood. Now this guy on his card, where do we have that thing? Where I give right you that there. copy on his card, it says. Uh, Vice, what is the first word there? Vice intelligence and narcotics. So narcotics, he's involved in drugs, okay? Now, we have such a drug epidemic in South Florida, but evidently it's a lot safer to go in and to, you know, bust a guy who's a clerk at a movie theater and try to set up people for easy arrest to embarrass and humiliate him and destroy their reputation, that's a lot easier mm-hmm. than going out and dealing with a drug problem because that's dangerous. Well, uh, uh, J. Edgar Hoover's FBI for years was, was public. You know, they, they always went after the high-profile crimes that would get them publicity and, and they would overlook. That's why the 
there was never any kind of a campaign against white collar crime and other things, you know, even even against the mafia because uh, it, it, there was just no percentage in it. But but meanwhile, you know, they had they they'd always trumpet this great percentage they had against kidnapping and things that would get them in the paper and everything. Boy, that FBI, they're really tremendous. Yeah. And there was more nonsense going. Talk about witch hunts, the witch hunts that went on there. Mm -hmm. Here's a guy that was just violating the Constitution left and right, bugging people's offices, and the guy was just obsessed with other people's sex lives. Who does that remind you of? Uh, uh, and, uh, you know, you think about it. There's a pattern here that goes on throughout history. Uh -huh. What's going on here is broadcast McCarthyism. Yeah, there's no yeah, just like the McCarthy. I mean, that's witch exactly hunts all what over it there. is. Okay. it's twisting and distorting and using the law to destroy people's and lives. If you look back, if you look back through history, the people like Joe McCarthy and Roy Cohn and Hoover and a lot of the others, they had more to hide themselves than anybody As else. As it turned out, you, it, uh, doesn't it always seem that way? That like yeah. the, the congressmen, the people who Bob seem, Bauman yeah, in Maryland, yeah, the people yeah. who seem to mm -hmm. be the most obsessed with. Yeah. The which, which showing what other people are doing behind closed doors are the ones who are really worried maybe that someone will discover what they're doing. Almost yeah. always. It, it does seem that way. A little way. bit too much. Okay, we're at the end of this hour. Tom Jick is here. We're going to continue talking about the TV and radio and uh, satellite dishes and cable and all the other stuff that we always talk about with Tom. Right now, Henry Barrow standing by with the 11 o'clock WIOD News. We'll come back at 11.05. Steve this afternoon from 2 to 6 and Sports Talk with Joe Zagacki and Sonny Hirsch at 6.05. IOD presents Neil Rogers. To get in touch and talk, call 751-WIOD in Dade, 524-WIOD in Broward, or 655 and 278-WIOD in the Palm Beaches. Other areas may call collect. The opinions expressed by the host, guests, or callers are not necessarily those of the station. Now, here's Neil Rogers on News Talk Radio 610 WIOD. 11.05 at WIOD. Tom Jicka, the radio and TV editor of the Fort Lauderdale News Sun Sentinel, is our guest. And we'll be here till 2 o'clock. Steve today has Patrick Sessions, father of Tiffany Sessions, who's been missing since February the 9th, and Wayne Black, who is the lead investigator in that case, and then Sports Talk with Joe and Sonny at 6.05. Uh, as far as TV is concerned, it's like one-dimensional. You know, I, I don't think we should overreact, because uh, even though it's shocking how many of these uh, shows are on, it all seem to be the same. That, this has been the history of television. Well, one of them's in trouble. on at the same time, and you get 20... Uh, uh, sitcoms on it. We go through these streaks. There's no originality. And as soon as something takes off and hits, then right away you've got 20 of the same kind of shows on. Well, one of them's already in trouble. Inside Edition, the uh, the King World show, that one that one's in, in trouble already. It, they might get the plug pulled on them in some markets uh, yeah. pretty quickly. David Frost, uh, you know, they, they got rid of him. And uh, uh, that one is in... But meanwhile, Inside Story, Channel 7 show, is going to probably go nationwide in syndication. Really? Oh, yeah. I, I had a story Saturday on that, and uh, it looks like it's going to happen probably week after next. And uh, a lot of syndicators are very optimistic about it. I think there'll always be one or two of these programs around for the same reason that the National Enquirer has been around for years. People want that kind of business. For the same reason, I don't think that there'll be more than that. You know, the Inquirer has its imitators. What, there's the Globe, and then there's the World Weekly News, which is the Inquirer, I think, sister paper, mm -hmm. uh, and Midnight, and all those others. But the Inquirer is the one that's kind of endured through the years. And I think that that's what will happen in this, that there'll be a shakeout, and one of these will endure, like Entertainment Tonight. When Entertainment Tonight first came on, there were two or three imitators. But they're still around, and they've they've really gotten raunchy. Now, entertainment tonight's yeah. like a continuation so, of a current. Oh, event. sure, it's the same kind oh, of show. Yeah. They're all that way. Well, it's it, right now. That that's that's the perception is that that's what people want. They want they want to look you know through other people's keyholes, and I guess that's nothing new. It's just that uh, that now people have gotten the nerve to give them a peek. It's the same thing with lifestyles of the rich and famous. I mean, a lot of this kind of stuff, and a lot of these people have been kicking around for years. I was thinking that the other day. I had Geraldo on for whatever, you know, he had the pygmy women transvestite uh, with large breasts. And um, I was thinking some of these, Sally and Geraldo, and some of these people have been just kicking around and kicking around forever. And all of a sudden, this kind of thing caught on. And now it's like they're being carried along with it. Well, there'll be a shake out there, too. I think, you know, Mort Downey is within a year of running his course. Uh, I think that uh, Sally Jesse will probably disappear in a year or so. Uh, Dunny, you will probably hang around because he's he's the class act of the bunch. And, and Oprah might, might hang on. Uh, you know, she might have a little longer run. But I, I think, you know, five years from now, maybe at best, Dunny, you and Oprah will be around. And, and within two years, you won't see any more... Uh, Mort Downey, you won't see any more Sally Jesse. Uh, it's uh, I, it's a limited uh, limited appeal format, and 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 they keep recycling the same guests, and they've already gotten caught 
uh, you know, with with guests who represented themselves as something they weren't. Wasn't uh, was it Geraldo who got nailed with the couple who said that uh, that he was a sex maniac and his wife was frigid or some you know the, something like that? Wasn't that the deal? Something and, like that. You know, that. they kind of made this. And and the, the month before they were on as a priest and a nun on another yeah. station. Sally, they they nailed her too. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So you know that's I what happened. The day she it, came on real indignant. Oh, uh, oh boy, curious. just fire in her red the glasses, boy. She was <laughs> foaming at the mouth. Yeah, so uh, they'll all go. Downey, I think, will be the first to go. And if he has to tone down his act, that's the end of him. Because that's really all he had going for him. Mm -hmm. there's, there's no substance at all to that program. It's, you know, as, as it's been characterized, it's wrestling without the matches. And but all of this stuff is professional wrestling without the well, matches. Well, Dunny, used to have, uh, Dunny, you used to be somewhat reputable and probably still is the most reputable of all of them. Uh, but, uh, th yeah, the rest of them are, for sure. I mean, even down, you know, it doesn't, like I said, without the matches, Geraldo got, got his nose busted, so I guess you could say, you know, was wrestling with yeah, the Yeah, and that made it worthwhile But for Murphy me. Brown did a program on that last night, uh, which, it, Murphy Brown's a real good show. It's probably the best of the new comedies. Yes, and, you're right. Uh, and they did a show last night where they, they, it's a 60 Minutes type program, and they were getting their head kicked in by someone, uh, by a program that seemed, the way it was described, they never showed it, they just described it, it was kind of like a Mort Downey show. And, uh... So they, they lowered their own standards, and, and sure enough, the ratings went up, and at the end of the program, they all just stood around going, God, is this really what we want to be? Mm -hmm. and, I, and I think that's the realization that, that some stations will come yeah, to. Yeah, but what about all this new stuff that's coming on, this um, roller games, and what, what are the names That'll of some be of these other shows? The American Gladiators, which is mm -hmm. having problems getting clearances. It looks like it might make it on now. The only one that's a sure bet is roller games, and uh, I don't think that'll, that'll last about as long as roller derby. You know, I, I think it'll have like a six-month run. It'll be a novelty. It all depends on just how outrageous they want to be, but I, I don't see it having any long-term... Uh, but the public appetite, and you, maybe you don't agree with this, but I think the public appetite is just getting insatiable. In other words, it, it's like uh, their voyeuristic desires are just to the point now where no matter what you show them, they want something beyond that. Well, people have mundane, miserable lives, so they're looking for a little excitement or, or to find out that other people have even worse, miserable lives. That's really what it comes down to. And, you know, there are even parallels in the situation here that, uh, that if you have an, an, an active, exciting life of your own, you don't have to become obsessed with what other people are doing. But uh, if, you're, if you're sitting at home and, and you're bored and you, you have no life and... Uh, uh, you, you've got to. Uh, you know, <laughs> like you've got, you, you can't wait for a program like a current affair to come on to uh, to put some excitement into your life. Or, uh, yeah, that's, that's about what it amounts to. People want to know that there are other people more miserable than they are. That's that really is it. Fascinating, isn't yeah. it? Yeah. Well, maybe we'll do that. Maybe we could really hit the jackpot here. We just find the most miserable people that we can find, and we'll bring them on the air every day. Well, doesn't Steve do that? <laughs> Tom uh, Jicka was one who said that. It's a joke. He's 12 minutes past 11 at WIOD. I want to tell you about the Armadillo Cafe, one of our very favorite restaurants. Boy, it's too bad we don't have any food coming in for Tom today, isn't it? Yeah, yeah it is too bad. I'm never here with well, food. Well, maybe we could uh, dredge something up. I know Pizza Loft's <laughs> coming tomorrow, and uh, Boone is coming from Siam's Dollar yeah, on Friday. A Nutrisystem bowl of uh, cream of well, well, we might be able to arrange that. Yeah. Now, we'll, we'll see if we can. It's <laughs> only 10 after 11. I'm sure that between now and noon or 12.30, we can dredge something up, right? Well, the one time was Probably. at 8 o'clock in the morning when we had pizza with pineapple. That's the only yeah, time you've ever had that. food. I'll get out of here. Now, we I'm didn't here? have food the last time you were here? No, uh, not at all. Well... Well, we got to do something yeah. about that. Maybe Carmine's listening down at Flores, and they can dredge something up on real short notice, you know, about 20, 30 pounds of food for Tom. Because <laughs> you've been doing real well. You've faded away to a shadow of your former self. I've been working on it. I'm putting some of it back on. I'm going to be on Nutrisystem before long. All right, that's good. We like that. Then we can use your name every day. <laughs> anyway, the RD, 1116 at WID. Let's explore that. You just said... Uh, <laughs> Well, no, why can't we explore that? No, I Tom like just said he hears a rumor about Jeff Charles' job. Jeff uh, Charles is leaving J&L, going to Providence, Rhode Island. I and don't know that. You know that to be true? Yeah. Yeah, okay. Well, yeah, and I, you know, I've heard rumors that Seidemann's going to get the job. I find it hard to believe, but that's the rumor you hear. Well, that would fit in up there. I mean, it's a real right-wing market, and they like to hire right-wingers up at j and The more further to the right, the better, so they ought to be in heaven with Mr. X. I've never, yeah, I, I've I never, did, I just won't mention, I'm not going to dignify him by mentioning The only time anymore, I've okay? ever heard him. Because he's a, he's a walking slime ball, and I just refuse to dignify him by mentioning his name. And Steve can try to put on this routine about, well, off the air he's so different and this and that. That's a lot of malarkey, okay? When you come on the air and you make the, the kind of bigoted remarks, and I mean, it's been going on for years now, 
the kind of uh, homophobic crap that he spews on the air. Don't tell me that off the air he's, uh, you know, a different guy, because I don't buy him. I've never heard him on the air, except that one day that we were here, just before you came on the station, or Friday afternoon, we were here with Steve, and he walked in, picked up the microphone, and invited himself into the program. That's the only time I've heard him, because he's on with Steve. See, as best I know, Steve's the only one who puts him on, and mm -hmm. I'm working when Steve is on. So I've never actually heard him on the air. Although I've heard of what what he's done. When he's on, all of a sudden his good buddy is Bob Kuntz. That's strange, isn't it? <laughs> yeah, well, see, they share a common dislike of me, so that, and a common obsessional dislike of me. So that, that seems to be the criterion uh, these days in certain circles, that if you hate Neil Rogers, then all of a sudden you become real bosom buddies. Yeah, well, that's um, yeah, that's uh, what we were talking about earlier. If you're if you're not my uh, if you're not my ally, you're my enemy. Yeah, eleven seventeen at WID. The phones are just really sizzling. The Good boy, yeah, jeez, this has never happened. Up. Well, I haven't taken this any only calls happened yet. one time. That Friday night, I was on what you were oh, yeah. over the but that must have been the or something. I'll never forget that night. You oh, and Cosper God. were on together. I don't or were you know. on alone? I don't, I think no, I think you been... and Cosford were on together. Yeah, and it just and it was couldn't... on a Friday night, and we were even using four-letter words. We couldn't get obscene phone calls. calls. But I, I mean, think, you know, uh, just... I think that night it was just. I mean, one not of even fruitcake call that night. He was yeah. still yeah. during yeah. his reign well, of terror. Let's hope he doesn't call today. No, I don't think so. He's anyway, in some bunker. if there are people out there want to talk about radio and TV and the cable systems, I don't. I don't want to do another whole show on cable and satellite. No, because that's a waste of time. It was great, but I mean, you know. Although let me let me tell you something. Yeah, look at that. They're starting to light up. Let me tell you. something. Last time we were here, we talked about the telephone company getting. Involved, that is really moving along. The and telephone, cable. yeah, they, they've started to tighten the screws. What they've done is they've made an offer to the National Association of Broadcasters. One of the big issues with broadcasters is cable systems are dropping certain uh, over-the-air stations. You know, some of the smaller UHF stations. Well, the the, uh, the uh, telephone companies of America, I think it is Telephone Association of America, they've promised the NAB that if the NAB backs their backs the, them getting into cable television that what they would do is promise that all over the air stations would be carried free for all time which is really tightening the screws now the NAB hasn't officially reacted to that yet uh, but they're looking at the proposal but the thing is this whole movement is picking up momentum and it is going to come before Congress and if people if you want to spend a phone call well contact your congressman contact your senator and tell them when this issue comes before you this year I want you to give it a good look because you're not, you're being treated shabbily by your cable company, uh, and the the phone company is going to make a major push to get in, and it's really the only hope. If the phone company gets in, th this whole business of not being able to get stations like Sports Channel, not being able to get WGN, will be history. You'll be able to pick up your phone, dial a certain number with a code, and you'll be you'll dial up the you'll pick the cable stations you want on your set. That's where it should have been. A long that is time exactly ago. how it should be. And the cable great. company is the and, and the phone company is the only hope. It, it's not a it's not a panacea. There'll probably be problems with the phone company too. But when I wrote the piece, as I said, just ask yourself which monopoly are you more happy with now, your phone service or your cable service? Mm -hmm. For all its problems, I don't think there's any question which one provides better, more reasonable, more uh, inexpensive service. So uh, this this is something we brought up last time, and it was really the first time we had discussed it publicly, and it is picking up momentum. So there okay, is okay. That's good news yeah. about time because usually we get nothing but bad news with the cable system. Twenty minutes past eleven at WID. Look at that board, man. We got two second <laughs> calls. On the board with Tom Jicka. Does this, oh, I, you know, I, tomorrow, I, I tomorrow is going to be 13 years that I've been on the air right. in this town, My and I'm going to, haven't I always told you that every single day is like the first day? It doesn't make any difference what's going on, it doesn't make any difference what you've been talking about, it doesn't make any difference what the climate is, so to speak, in a community. Just the same kind of thing every single day, like starting you, all over and again. And when you answer the phone, the first call is going to be a request for the I-95 song. Probably. Could be. <laughs> okay, we've got a couple of lines open in Broward. Five they're all going. Four. Well, they're don't get, don't start telling them that, okay? <laughs> Wait till he gets them on hold. Yeah, they're all going now. But you just mark my words. Trust me, I know my customers, okay? Miami, hello. There we go. See, there's See? our first call. Yeah. Now, I have a feeling. Is there somebody on there? There is somebody on there. Okay, it must be. I'm going to put it back on hold. It must be this thing is screwed up again. I mean, it's so embarrassing to go through this every stinking day. Okay, let's see. There's off. Uh, Miami. Hey. Yeah. Good morning. How I'm you doing? I'm on a mobile, if I can uh, get in. Okay, sir. You're on right now. Hey, good morning. I didn't realize I was. I didn't think you were picking him right up. Uh, you know, I have to, to comment about, Neil, is uh, the fact that the, the uh, whole thing that happened with the, in the sports and of how the media handles the different things, all of a sudden the fact that... Uh, uh, and I'm not going to mention names like you don't like to throw names around. The University of Miami coach who now becomes the coach of a professional team, how that has been focused and become such a center of attention to the news. It's, and like you say, it's 
just a game. It's just a radio show. Will these people give a break? Well, yeah, but you don't think that's a major story? I do. It, it is, but... It, I mean, it's not just that he became a coach of the team. I mean, they sold the team. Landry had been there since the franchise was started in Dallas. Uh, yes, I remember. And they've been that. dying on the vine the last few seasons to the point of embarrassment, and now they sell the thing. And Johnson leaves and a whole... Oh, I have two lines on. David Shula leaves and... Uh, yeah, I mean, it's it's a big story. I mean, granted, it is only a game, but within the context of that, it's a major story. I think we lost him. By the way, I have a theory on this whole David Shula thing. I think I think David Shula left so he could come back. Were you on five, sir? Is this you? Me? I'm with you. Okay, in other words, this is the same caller. I had two lines punched up at the same okay. time. I'll get a little crack up on my line. Okay, well, what you know, what else is there to say? It's a major story, and whether you know sports is that important to you or not isn't relevant within the uh, context of news. True, it's Neil, a big story. You're a professional in the business. I would respect your professional opinion. You feel that it, it's worthy of the amount of coverage they're giving it? Yes, oh, okay. absolutely. Okay. Yeah. Well, like I say, I respect your opinion. No, well, I, agree. I, I, I agree with you that a lot of extent. sports is overblown, yeah. and that it, it's just yeah. a game, and that people get just hysterical. Like the Super Bowl, we get like three days of coverage. Over a three-hour ball game, but uh, in this case, it is a big story. Yeah, news is, to a certain extent, is what people are interested in. Right now, people because are interested. This, in this isn't only sports; it's business too. Okay, yeah, when a ma- when an NFL business. team is sold like that, it's big business. You're right; it's major business. On the other side of it, then you get uh, three days in the news of Neil Rogers being harassed by uh, Hallandale. And look what that. Well, is. I'll tell you one thing. You know, uh, you say three days in the news where they put this story that they buried it in the Sun Sentinel. You'd have to have a magnifying glass to find that story, and the one in the Herald only appears in the Broward edition. So evidently, they don't feel that like when uh, you know police abuse their power and try to set people up to destroy them, that's a major story. Yeah. The TV stations, to the best of my knowledge, didn't even use it. No. Channel 4 sent a guy on here, but didn't even use the story. So again, you know, you, the, the, the problem is that you can be just decimated. You can have everybody attacking you from all angles in a personal way. I'm not just talking about throwing barbs out, because I do that as well as anybody. But I'm talking about trying to destroy your life. And my colleagues in the media in this town, even though I've been here tomorrow 13 years, don't feel it's significant enough a story to really give it any coverage, which is pretty damn poor. It's pretty pathetic. And, you know, Steve made the comment yesterday when I was on his show with Norm Kent. He said, well, you've ticked off a lot of people at the TV stations. Big deal. That's too bad. The the story has got nothing to do with whether they like me or not. If they're too small to cover the story because they don't like me, then they're not journalists. Well, that's the thing is, you know, just divorce the personality entirely. It's the practice, if this is true, of the police encouraging someone else to set someone up where a crime not only wouldn't be committed, but it hasn't even been considered being committed. And the police are encouraging somebody to put someone in a position. If it can happen to you, it can happen to anyone else. Suppose, you know, to to take it to to an extreme... Uh, you're a well-known personality, but suppose this same cop has it in for his neighbor. Yeah. Or any cop oh, has sure. it. Let's take sure. the, the, the cop out of it. Let's say any cop has it in for its yeah. neighbor. I mean, could he do this kind of thing and destroy a person's life? You bet. Uh, the, the, to me, there's a much bigger issue than, than this single officer and, and, and Neil Rogers. It's What are our police doing? They're supposed to be there to protect us, not, not to put us into jeopardy. Okay, 25 past 11 at WIOD, and we'll come D. back with... Well, so I heard a they rumor. They told us to use that a lot, so that's why we're doing it. <laughs> yeah. I heard a rumor you saw that music fits in that you saw Bill Cosford. Is that true? I saw Bill Cosford. There was a uh, a wedding uh, that involved someone from the uh, Fort Lauderdale News and someone from the Miami Herald last Saturday, and so you had both newspapers were there. It was really kind of strange to was it you know everybody sitting around schmoozing. Swapping yeah, listen, tales. it is pretty strange seeing Bill Cosford in town because he's uh, here so rarely. Does he have a permanent residence? Well, he said to say hello to you. Or does he stay at the Holiday Inn for a couple of days? <laughs> I don't think he's got a permanent residence anymore in town because we've been trying to get him on here. We've only been here four months now. In a couple of days, it'll be four months. And uh, we just can't uh, no, make contact. tried everything. He's the only human being that you communicate with through answering machines and never actually speak to directly, mm-hmm. only on the answering machine. He leaves well, you've messages. got to find out where the next film festival is and then track him <laughs> yeah. down there. Havana, I think. They, they, they have, have a, a uh, film festival. They have a big convention of suits that's coming up in town. And when, <laughs> when they have that bill, we'll be there right at the front of the line. He's a great guy, but a little on the pseudo side. Here's a mobile in Palm Beach with Tom Jicka. Hello. Hi, how are you? Uh, I'm really not in Palm Beach. I, I was in downtown Miami, and I'm heading back north, and that's the only number I know. I want to ask two questions. Number one, uh, I guess being a native-born Floridian, born and raised in Miami, how come you all don't pronounce it right? Miami? Yeah. You and uh, we'll Morris Irv Schindler, McLemore? We'll put Irv Schindler back on here. Say <laughs> Miami Beach, Miami. That'll make you doubly happy. There you go. Uh, the reason I called is uh, I just want you to know that you all aren't the only ones that are happy that that guy Charles is going to be leaving J N O. 
He's been nothing but bad news since the day he came up here. No, he was bad news before he came up there. He's been bad news. He's been bad news ever since he's been on the air, sir. Believe me, I have no idea yeah, what the man was, is doing he, on he the air. He wears out his welcome fairly quickly. He was quickly. supposed to fill in for Steve here for a few days uh, several months ago, and he filled in one show, I think, and he ran in the opposite, ran in the opposite direction and said, thanks, but don't come back. Well, I don't blame him. I'm just wondering why it took so long for the people up here to, uh, or I should say, up in Palm Beach. Well, it didn't take long. He's only been there, what, six, yeah. seven months? Yeah, his ab- no, I don't think he's been that long. Not his that average long. job is, uh, you know, like about how often be- people change underwear. Well, I'll tell you, you know, he, he uh, is not exactly very well received in the area. Yeah. Well, let me just tell you this. If it's true that Rick Siderman's going to replace him, you're going to wish you had him back, okay? <laughs> well, I, Mr. Trust X, me. as I think you called him, uh, why don't you tell us a little bit about him because we're really not too familiar with him. Well, I don't know, first of all, if, if it's true that he's going to be up there. And secondly, I'm certainly not going to... I'll be the last one to promote his show if he is, okay? So you'll have to listen for yourself and get a good dose of his right-wing, fanatical, homophobic propaganda. And, you know, maybe you'll like it. I don't know. Okay, and then one last thing before I go off the air. You know, uh, up in the Palm Beach County area, after like about 7 o'clock at night, it's very, very hard to get your station. Yeah, well, all the uh, AM stations have to change pattern and power at uh, nighttime, so that's uh, that's what happens at sundown. Whenever e- Each month the time changes, but at sundown, AM radio kind of uh, disappears. Ah, okay. All right, well, enjoy your show. Okay, thank you. Speaking of Jay and out, yeah, did you see the piece I did on, on their little, the, the night that Steve and I were on that show up there with Jim Ackerman? And yeah. They won't let their people go on? Boy, mm-hmm. how is that for faith in your own people? They won't even let Fowler call this show anymore. Mm-hmm. Oh, I'm not, well, obviously, if they won't, they wouldn't appear on a PBS public affairs show. They wouldn't allow their people I mean, to go isn't, on? Isn't that ridiculous? I mean, talk about paranoid and petty. Childish. Yeah. There are people within within the market who call us. Bill Tanner calls us. Don Cox calls us all the time. Sonny used to even know he's not on the air now, but when he was, he would call us all the time. There are other people in the market who are competitors. Budell calls us. I mean, I don't understand what kind of juvenile paranoia that is. It's just, it's a bush league. Let's face it. See, that's the one area where I disagree with your newspaper, okay? Too much emphasis on everything Palm Beach. Palm Beach is not... Palm Beach is just like there. It's a half a million unconnected... Well, it's a growing area. But it's a bush... I mean, this is bush league to begin with, but Palm Beach is so far be behind us. I mean, it's like in the twilight zone. Yeah, but and the it, people who wind up on radio in Palm Beach are... There are two categories, basically. People who never should have been on the air in the first place, like John Levitt, to use an example, or Jim Ackerman... Or people who are on the way out, like Mike Miller and Lee Fowler and the people uh, of that Well, that's going to change. Palm Beach now is going through what Miami went through 20, 25 years ago, in that it, it's changing from just a sleepy little hamlet where people come. I to disagree with you. I was in Palm Beach, and I'm not saying it was because I was there, but when I was there 14 years ago, that town was happening. I mean, it was a pretty decent town. Oh, yeah, but there's now, a population West, explosion West Palm now. Beach is like, yeah, but you're talking about in the hinterlands, okay? But well, West Palm no, Beach even, is a toilet now. Everybody who lives Palm there Beach. admits it. But it's going to change. The market's going to change drastically. You're going to get people moving down from the north and from the Midwest, and and you're going to you're going to lose that small town mentality. And a lot of these people are there now are going to disappear. The same as people who used to be on the air here that couldn't get a job here now. And and you're going to see that change. And and I think it'd be foolish not to not to try and reach those people. We're, we're a better newspaper than the Palm Beach Post, so why shouldn't we try and well, serve the people? Uh, there? That goes without saying. Okay, it's 11.33 at WI. I don't want to get you on the spot there about Palm Beach. It's no, just that I get so tired of reading about what shows are going to be on PBR and J&O. I don't... Nobody cares what Not shows my are going to be on. I mean, I mean, no, I, I mean in your column, column but on. in the listings, in the radio I, I, I listings, cover they're both. obsessed with the Palm Beach stations, okay? Well, you know what, that You know the business. That's a product of good promotion. People send... It, it, to get in a radio listing, as unfortunate as it is, is all you got to do is send the listing to the, to the clerk who, who, who puts the listings in, and you'll get listed. That's it. I mean, it, by the way, our one open line now is in Palm Beach. <laughs> I just mentioned that in passing, Tom. Six five five W Y O D. Six five five nine four six three. We're not we're not right wing enough for Palm Beach on this show. That's the problem. This whole station's a little a little bit too progressive for Palm Beach. Well, and Mike Miller's on now. Yeah, that's true. That's, <laughs> and they're getting ready for Lee. So you put that co- combination together, we can't handle it. I want to tell you, Lady B. Well, that's what I always liked about Lee Fowler is that he was original. It's 1138 at WIOD. Tom Jicka is our guest today during the entire duration. We sure hope some lunch is coming, don't you? Yeah. Well, that would be pretty yeah. embarrassing. We need to if we probably fade away in the one See, to two hours. See, that's the problem. On the days when I don't want the food, then we get enough food for the Chinese army. On the days when we have a, an honored guest like Tom Jicka, then we sit here and just kind of wonder with trepidation whether anything's going to show up or not. But uh, somebody will come through, won't they? I hope so. Won't It'll they? Be nice. We yes. have to feed Tom. Or yeah, Tom is we'll be humiliated. Oblivion. 
He looks like he's going to join the Bob Mayer School of Broadcasting. <laughs> Miami, hello. Hi, Neil. Uh, I just want to make a couple of comments and ask Tom a question. First of all, I support you and what you're going through with this uh, jerk. Uh, I found it very interesting on yesterday's on Steve's show when you came on, and uh, I started out listening to Steve, and then when you came on, I listened to you, and I really got tuned into your show. But before I ever listened to you, I used to dislike you just based on everything I heard from everybody else. Mm -hmm. And I found it really interesting that Steve has come all the way around. I mean, before he was buddies with this guy, and uh, all of a sudden they start attacking him, and then all of a sudden he's, you know, this guy is horrible. You know, and I just found it really interesting, and I could agree with you the way you got upset yesterday with him. Well, I, uh, you know, I still have some problems, but I'm not, we're not, you know, there's no point. It's counterproductive. Steve was right about that to continue it on the air. I have problems with a lot of things that have been done, many of which, ironically, were done on this station. Yeah. Their entire programs were done hate shows against me. And I'll be the first one to admit that I've probably taken shots at everybody in the media in this market at one time or another, but I don't do entire programs on people. I don't invite the audience to call in and crucify people. That's a whole different story, and I can think of numerous occasions when that was done on this station, not only by Steve, but by two of the people who used to be in this time slot, mm -hmm. neither of whom belonged on the air in the first place, okay? When they would do entire shows just uh, assassinating me on the air, uh, inviting uh, that individual, among others, to come on the air and do that. And, 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 you know, this is a thing maybe Tom can comment. This is the only market I've ever heard of in my life where there are stations who cannot compete with a particular talent, and me in this case, and so as opposed to trying to bring in somebody who can compete, they try to get you off the air. Have you ever in your life heard of that, whether it's in New no, York or any other well, market? Well, this is, this is one of the few markets in the country where people talk about each other as oh, much they, as they not, do. But they do it everywhere now. I mean, now it's commonplace. In New York, they do it all the time now. But that, it's a new But they phenomenon. don't try to get each other off the air. Not that I know it's of. Unheard, I never, it's uh, unheard of. <laughs> it's unheard of. Paul Lyle would sit right right in this station, you know, right at this microphone. We're gonna if it's the last thing I do, I'm gonna get him off the air. Ironically and enough, he's yeah, gone. Paul and I'm here in the time slot doing double already in one book, double the number that he ever did on a good day, okay? Yeah, and meanwhile he was one of your big fans. Really? Off the air. Neil was one really? another closet Neely, yeah. One thing that I that I think about, I can understand how it's counterproductive to both of you be fighting on the air with Steve and everything and and it's not good, but it, uh, just one comment that I want to make. It's very difficult. I don't think it should have started in the beginning, but it's very difficult when somebody's putting all this dirty laundry, which a lot of it is not true, out to the public, and then they expect from one moment to the next for the public not to, you know, <laughs> just to tune off about it. And it's really upsetting because it's very hypocritical from other people. Well, you know, when you're in contact with somebody, and again, I don't want to perpetuate, but when you're in contact with somebody day in and day out, as he was with this individual in Coral Gables, and having numerous conversations with him, it, it stretches my credibility, my uh, my imagination to believe that anybody could be so naive. Maybe Steve just naive as not to understand the sinister nature of this campaign that was being waged against me. It just happens that at the time it was expedient because I was on this uh, on another station and he was here. But uh, you know, again, there's no point in, in just burying it into the ground. It happened. Uh, I guess if he had to do it over again, maybe he would have done it differently, but it's uh, it's behind us. No, definitely. And, and Neil, you guys uh, have a great show, and and uh, I really look forward to listening to you guys every day. And, Tom, I wanted to ask you a question now. Yeah. Uh, I really want to know what ha really happened with Sonny Fox, and what are the rumors? Where is he going to turn? Well, I can't tell you what really happened because nobody is speaking. The, the, the matter is in the hands of attorneys. But apparently what happened, what I've been able to piece together from people at the station who have spoken off the record was that Sonny and the management there had a dispute on a Friday morning after one of his programs, and it involved a contest that they were doing, and Sonny more or less said you could take this job and shove it, and as people do and don't mean, but that was the all the uh, justification they apparently needed to go, you quit, you quit, we heard you quit, you hear him quit, I heard him quit. And uh, they said that was it. Now, like I say, that's all pieced together from a little here, a little there. It's nothing that, uh, you know, I'd want to chisel into concrete, but uh, I'm fairly confident in my sources that's what happened. And where do you think he might turn up? I think he might turn up somewhere uh, about uh, three-quarters of the way up on the dial. Hmm. As soon as ownership changes hands. Ah. Yeah, but didn't that sale fall through? Well, that waxing? sale did, but there's going to be a sale. Yeah. And I think that's where he'll wind up. Okay. Mm -hmm. Well, thank you very much, and you guys got a great show. Thanks Take for care. calling. Bye-bye. 1143 at WIOD, an open line in Dade with Tom Jicka, 751-9463, 751-WIOD. Miami, hello. Hey, Neil. Hi. <clears throat> hey, Tom. How you doing? I have a cable story. I'm sorry you may not want to hear uh, too many stories on cable today, but I have to tell you this one. Uh, 
about a week and a half ago on a Monday night, uh, out here where I live in Kendall, they were going to have a pay-per-view wrestling match. Now I'm a wrestling fan, uh, yeah. like Steve. And uh, it was a pay-per-view, and I called on Monday. It was on Monday night, and they confirmed the uh, hookup. So I proceeded to invite my cousin, who was also a fan. He came over from Hialeah. He lives in Hialeah Gardens area with his family over to my home Monday night. He comes over. We switch on the uh, cable, and it's not working. We're not receiving the signal. So I called the cable company back up, and I says, listen, uh, I hooked up this afternoon, and they said, okay, go check, and I checked, and it was on again. Gave me about 10 minutes worth, and then all of a sudden it cuts off again. This time I called, and I wanted to speak to the same girl, okay? She tells me that she's unable to override the computer, and the computer cut my system off. And I asked her why. She goes, well, because you're a month late on your, on your uh, payment. And I says, well, excuse me, ma'am, but I've been a client or customer of yours now for about a year and a half. Uh, I've hooked up every single pay-per-view uh, wrestling match and boxing match. I've watched them all. I've paid for them all. Just because I'm one month late now, you're going to disconnect my, uh, yes, yeah, I am. I says, uh, is there any supervisor? I can, no, I can't. Well, were you late with the bill? Well, just one month. Well, just one, just as your, your choice of words. Well, it was. Well, okay, yeah. I guess it's my word against theirs. No, I mean, you, you say just one month, they might say you're a month late. Well, I paid last month because I had that uh, pay-per-view for WWF, and now this month it was for NWA. So I, I'm, I'm one month late, and they say... Well, that's so. the best leverage they have against you to cut you off. I mean, I'm not applauding what they did, but, uh, you know, you, you, you did say you were late well, with the, the bill. The bottom line is you're dealing with a monopoly. They treat people like crap, and uh, what can I say? That's, well, that's the way they are. And like we discussed last time Tom was here... When you get all these outages and it's out for hours and hours, you know, on days when it isn't even raining or anything and it just goes out for hours and hours, I don't know of anybody except those people who really made practically a personal crusade out of it and were willing to take the time to do it, whoever got refunded or deducted from their bill on all that time that missing when you have no service. That's they just they have a monopoly me. within their own communities and they don't give a damn about anybody, which is why Store just arbitrarily takes GN away and uh, other people just don't want to give it to you or the sports channel. They just give you all the schlock that they can get on there and they don't give a damn what you want. Yeah. Well, well, I base myself mainly on I'm a, I'm a paying customer, and I've been a paying customer. I've always had, and I've never had a problem with them. And they just didn't want to hook me up. There's no way. And here I am stuck with uh, my cousin's family who was here. I had a group of... And you're embarrassed that you didn't pay your bill? Huh? And you're embarrassed that you well, didn't tell, pay tell your bill? Tell your cousin's family so to chip in and pay the bill. put up with this company's crap because I, I don't... How much do they charge for the wrestling, by the way? How much do they charge for the wrestling? Excuse me? How much do they charge you for the wrestling? Fourteen ninety-five. Wow. For one night, what is it, about wow. a three-hour show? <laughs> uh, about a three, three-and-a-half-hour show. Yeah. Can you believe that? For fourteen ninety-five. Yeah. I'm, oh. I'm so gullible, I have paid it in the past, but that's it. I'm, I'm going with satellite. You guys changed my mind. I've been listening to your show for some time. Matter of fact, I'm the psychic. If it uh, rings any bell for Neil, I called before. And uh, I'm going with satellite. And okay, well, i got a satellite commercial coming up right now, so keep listening. Get your pen handy, because i got a phone number for you, okay? Really? And the phone number is 797-STAR in Fort Lauderdale. That's 797-7827. That phone number covers from the Keys to the Palm Beach. 1152 at WIOD. Tom Jick is here. No food yet. <laughs> I just mentioned that in passing. Well, it's good it. for that, my diet. Yeah. No, nah, but that would be embarrassing. It really would. I mean, we always brag about the fact we can get great food in here almost any day, right? <laughs> well, yeah. Although I will say this. We've given Carmine a long rest. True. I don't want to put the pressure on him down there at Flores, but we've given him a long <laughs> run. Just a hint, Carmine. Uh, Fort Lauderdale, hello. Hi, Neil. Hi. Hi, Tom. I just wanted to give you a call. I've always been a subscriber to the New Sun Sentinel, and I've never really uh, read any of your work uh, in the news, in the Miami yeah. News, because I've never read that paper. But I always heard Neil talk a lot about you, and I was excited when he said you were coming to the Sun Sentinel. I wanted to tell you I love what you folks have done with the TV book. I think it's a great job. It's a lot better look, and it's a lot easier to read, and... and Actually, it's the first part that I turn to when I get my Sunday paper now. And I, I love your question and answer column. I love, Thank re you. love reading about like uh, Gordon Stevens and, and and all the things that are happening inside the industry. And I think it'd be interesting for a, for a weekly column just about things like that. Well, it is. I mean, what that, that's Gordon what we, what happened to Gordon. <laughs> well, he's doing nothing. He's doing oh. voiceovers. And, no, we have a, a feature now in the paper. It started about uh, oh, I guess shortly after I got there. It's called TJ Q and A and. People send in questions about, you know, what's this guy doing and what happened to this program and, and all the other things, and we, and we answer. And we answer about five or six questions every week. I think it's really interesting. Also, uh, as far as the, the phone company getting involved with cable, uh, for some reason the phone company's got a really negative uh, uh, reputation, just like the IRS or something. I don't know Not why. Not with me. 
I don't know why, because any time I call uh, Southern Bell for anything like getting a jack put in the house or a complaint or anything, they're here the next day. Their people, their customer service people are the greatest people on the phone. They're the only company that I've ever written to a supervisor to tell them how, how appreciative of, that I was of how courteous they're Oh, no, I have, I, you know, granted, any big company, you're going to have a problem somewhere along the line, but no, you compare the phone company to the cable company. See, you're I, right. I, the I phone company, you, can, you pick up your phone and you got a problem, you get somebody. Right, you've got I, a problem I've with your cable. A lot, I've had a lot of different cable companies, and you call those people. You better have a good book to read hold. while you sit on hold. You're automatically put on hold for 10 or 15 minutes. And, and then, then you the get someone who's not her problem, and she gives you to someone else that you put on hold again. Yeah, and then they're picking their nose. They're, they're eating while they talk to you. It's just like listening to this show sometimes. <laughs> <laughs> just a joke. But, but no, I, it, it would definitely be an improvement. I, I want to ask two questions. Number one, if, um, h how long do you think it realistically would be before the phone company could possibly be involved in the... Realistically? I would doubt it would be much sooner than two or three years. But really? You think it's Well, the, soon? There, there's going to be hearings, and, and the cable industry has just armed themselves to the teeth financially. They're fighting this as if this sure. was their last stand. Which and it and could be. Probably would be. Uh, and and I, I have a feeling that these hearings will drag on, and... Congress being what it is, things rarely right. get done the first time that it's brought up. But uh, the ball has to start rolling somewhere, and, and I think it will happen. And I think that the more people contact their, their congressmen and let them know the depth of their feelings. The pay raise issue is, is a good example, that uh, there was really a, a, an outpouring of, of public uh, feeling about that, and, and it got it done. I, I'm not sure that I agree entirely with how it was done and what happened, but it did happen. And uh, if there's anything else that people are really moved about, it's their cable television. And, and I don't know that, uh, that congressmen who tend to be some, sometimes removed from the community are as aware of the depth of right. feeling on this issue. Don't most cable companies have a franchise for five or ten years, though? So wouldn't the phone Well, yeah, but they're not exclusive franchises. franchises. They're exclusive only to the extent of that no one goes into an area where a cable company exists. I shouldn't say no one. It's rare that, uh, that another company goes in because it's just so terribly expensive. Which the phone uh, company could But the phone that. company has the deep pockets to go in and overbuild, is the expression, to right. put a sec. And if there's two in there, you know you're going to get good service. Mm -hmm. The cable industry's argument is that the phone company is so powerful and so rich that as soon as they got in that they would put the cable companies out of business and there would be no competition again. Right. To which I say, fine, the phone company's been a monopoly for a long time and I'm satisfied with the service they give me. I was never satisfied with the service I got from my cable company. Okay, let's uh, take another one before the news from Miami. It's not the same guy. It's the it? same guy with the, uh, yeah, with the uh, race. <laughs> we stopped him years ago. Anyway, well, then get on here. I dumped it. We have an open line in date, 751-WIOD. It's good to know he's back, though. That's actually because, <laughs> uh, we kind of we have him. an idea who it is if it's the same guy. And uh, look at that. Three lines just dropped off off when he had disappeared. And that, mm -hmm. that's promising. Two in Broward, 524-WIOD, and one in Boca, 278-9463. Well, I don't, I don't understand these people at all some days. Fort Lauderdale, hello. Hi. Hi. Well, I got another cable complaint for you. Okay. HBO is the pit. Why is that? Kirk on Broward Beach. It has the worst reception we've ever seen. We've complained about it for a whole week. 26 CNN. Selkirk, um, Selkirk's HBO, and of course you get all the sparklies and the flutteries on. There isn't any excuse. There isn't any excuse for it. It's in their equipment. It's in their lines because they're picking it up right off the satellite. And uh, Tom and I can both tell you, having you know, satellite dishes, that the picture is as clear as a bell that they mm -hmm. that they are getting. So it's something in their transmission lines, in their equipment from them to you, and they have, you know, they got no business giving you an inferior picture. That's the one thing no, you should no expect is a whatsoever. quality picture. It's only at night, by the way. Uh, it's not so bad during the daytime, but at night it's terrible. We can't even watch it. And we're, we're in a condominium that's serviced by Selkirk, and we are demanding uh, a refund on the HBO because we do pay extra for it. Well, I, I've had no problem with my HBO. It's interesting, though. I got a note uh, the other day from them that I think between March 1st and 7th, which would start tomorrow, there's going to be those uh, atmospheric conditions. Oh, yeah. and, and that you might have. But even when that happens, that's just a very minor inconvenience mm -hmm. for a very short period. And it, and Sunspots. When, yeah, and, and it only happens maybe once or twice during the period. Mm -hmm. No, there's no excuse. It's their problem, and they should be required to fix it. You should get a reason. Yeah, raise hell with them. In fact, if, if a bunch of people got together, whichever cable company it is, getting inferior pictures and just refused to pay your bills, 
until they straighten the picture out or at least withhold that part of the bill for whichever ones aren't coming in, then I think you'll get some action. And, and when you call them, tell them that your next call is going to be to your congressman. I guess it would be E. Clay Shaw for you? Yeah. Tell him you're going to call his office and suggest that when the telephone's entrance into the cable TV field comes up that you're urging him to support it. Can I ask one more question? Yeah, yeah. real quick. Studio 5B, what happened to it? It got canceled. Oh. After two weeks, two shows, something like that. Really? Yeah. It was on. It came on. They had a sneak preview on a Wednesday or a Thursday night. Uh, they put it on Sunday, and I think after the second week, they canceled it. Okay, thanks. Okay, okay. good luck. Bye-bye. Okay, yeah, one thing I will say, I say a lot of bad things about Continental Cable, which used to be American Cable, but they have straightened their equipment out. The picture on virtually every channel is excellent. And there's no and reason it should be. And there's be. no reason why it shouldn't be on any of the cable systems. That's the, that's the big thing that you're paying for, not just the selection of the different channels, but for a quality picture. Mm -hmm. And if they're giving you a screwed up, lousy picture, and also, by the way, we've got to run here for the news, but Channel 6 is coming in a lot better. Well, they said that they, yeah, they were. They, they were made <laughs> Not they perfect, have to but do I got that. news. Yeah. They've made a lot of improvements, okay? Good. Okay, we have an open line in Boca with Tom Jicka. We'll come back after the news. 278-9463, 278-WIOD. April Wortham next with the new news, and we'll be back at 12.05. Radio 610 WIOD presents Neil Rogers. To get in touch and talk, call 751 WIOD in Dade, 524 WIOD in Broward, or 655 and 278 WIOD in the Palm Beaches. Other areas may call collect. The opinions expressed by the host, guests, or callers are not necessarily those of the station. Now, here's Neil Rogers on News Talk Radio 610 WIOD. You never know. 1205 at WIOD. Neil Rogers, our guest is Tom Jicka the TV radio editor for the Fort Lauderdale News and Sun Sentinel. We're talking about TV and radio and cable and satellite dishes. Although, like I said, you know, we'll answer the questions about cable and satellite, but we did almost four There's solid no hours. There's no in going through cable horror Last stories. Everybody's got one. You know, yeah. it's like a puppet. <laughs> yeah. Well, you know, they've got you coming in every way because it's so hard to get through to them and you got to wait forever on hold and listen to Glenn Hutton's voice for 30 minutes, you know. And it's just, uh, most people have got a life. They don't have time to do that. Exactly. It's like if... Maybe we could find somebody. I don't want to mention any names, but somebody just popped into my mind who has a lot of spare time. Maybe he could be right. kind of the cable coordinator. And uh, all of the people who got a problem, we ought to check it out. And see well, if that's what you need. Someone that. who can spend eight to 12 Somebody's hours a day got doing an nothing. Absolute uh, yeah. endless amount of time. Okay, we have an open line in Boca, 278 9463, 278 WIOD. What is that? Oh, boy, isn't that great? Let me uh, have that. And uh, let's uh, go to Miami here to start this hour. Hello. Hello. How are you doing? Uh, you changed the subjects, more or less, but I really am uh, very much for you. I uh, really appreciate your staff, yourself, for the Christmas present when I uh, help support the community house. Mm -hmm. And um, I haven't been called in because I've been so busy. I usually hear you in the car and between the shop and the car. Now, what happens is I think there's a very distinct relationship between what's happening to you and what's happening to Salman Rushdie. Now, in a religious way, no, but in a sense that it's a way of using the power of the law, whereas Khomeini is using the power of his state to silence somebody that they disliked for whatever reason. Mm -hmm. And I see no support, or very little support in Miami from the press. I agree. It's really oh, they, they, they evidently just, you know, this is a uh, 30th page story. Anytime this stuff comes out, it's been it's been going on for 20 months. I'm not just talking about the episode yesterday, which uh, for all we know is unrelated, at least as best as we can determine. But I'm just talking about the ongoing saga of a witch hunt against somebody who, you know, is in the media, is controversial. And I guess uh, there are some people who say, well, he's just looking for publicity. I don't, I don't need that kind of publicity. I, you know, I'm the first one who would wish that it would go away and never come back. So I'm not looking for publicity, but for crying out loud, when this kind of uh, suppression goes on and kind of witch hunt is going on right in their own midst, and the people people in television haven't done one minute, to the best of my knowledge, about any of this. Not one of the local TV stations has done one second on any of this witch hunt. Well, just well there was, the yeah, the other night Inside Story brought it up somewhat. Right. Right. No, they didn't. He wasn't part of the story. No, but they, they just, mentioned it. Well, they, well, used, they used the euphemism. It was a good piece, yeah. but again, it certainly was not about the witch hunt. Well, I think they're also afraid of the financial aspect of lawsuits, and this fellow is very persistent. I think because the possibility of what you're doing, he just might find himself uh, at the other end of the lawsuit. The radio station he worked for previously lost a great deal of money, if I understand how the ratings have dropped. 
And much of this was pressure to fire you or, or find some way to... Well, there's no question that he destroyed almost single-handedly a business relationship between me and Guy Gannon. I mean, we had our problems already like you do with any company, but uh, they certainly weren't extraordinary because I was there for four and a half years, which by most standards in this business, pretty good amount of time right. on, two, on both of their radio stations in the market, did extremely well on both of them. And uh, it was only after this witch hunt started that the relationship really began to deteriorate rapidly. And again, that's, that's a violation of the law. When you interfere in people's business relationships, that's illegal. Well, it certainly Unethical it, and illegal. Certainly the, it certainly was an attempt to interfere in mine and, and cause problems with me and my employers. And uh, again, all I can say, my only sin apparently was was not uh, being a you know and, and, and I got to tell you something I'm sick and tired of hearing how long it takes the Florida bar to do this and how long it takes this one to do that I mean you know there are situations in this country which is why we sought an injunction in court in Dade County and the judge was too busy sleeping and waiting to go to lunch to give us any time or do us any justice but I mean you know this is a kind of thing that should be put to a stop immediately okay well, and if they have to investigate all the other ramifications fine do it down the road but in the meantime put a stop to it and give everybody a breather and let us go on with our business and do our lives without this interruption and harassment well what's ir irritating me is it's interfering with the show I really enjoy you the bet show. your life it's interfering it. with the show I'll tell you one thing when I came in here yesterday between all of that and then this other witch hunt that they tried in Hollywood over the weekend that I found out about uh, I don't even think I should have been here yesterday. It's I really going, shouldn't because there was no mind. point in being here. Neil, I can hear it. I can hear it in your mind. It's kind of through destroying your... You can't help but have pressure on you. Let's face it. Well, the gentleman who's sitting across from me went through a week of intensive uh, uh, harassment and was, it was a total basket case. I've known him for many, many years, and I've never seen him in such a mental state as he was at the end of just one week of it. So you can imagine 20 months, which comes out to 80-some weeks, you can just imagine how anybody would feel after uh, this, this witch hunt that's been going on. Well, I think that you have to understand that, that you do have sort of support. There is public support. But I'm afraid that we're in an era now where people don't want to get involved, especially people in position. And lawsuits and lawyers and legality, you know, it really snowballs, let's face it. And that's part of the pressure that he's putting on you. Being part of the legal profession, he's very much aware of this. He knows how to utilize it. And that's why he ought to be put down very quickly. Mm -hmm. I agree with you. The legal profession, if there's anybody that should be doing something about this, they should do it immediately. Yeah, I'm wondering where all my all these great uh, legal minds are in this community, in Dade, Broward, and Palm Beach counties, all these mavens who are making millions and millions of dollars practicing law. I wonder where they are with their help and with their intervention and with their protest of the Florida Bar. Uh, if they would get together and do something about this, perhaps we could, uh, you know, do something a lot I can't think that his industry is very proud of them. <laughs> well, if they're not very, it's one thing not to be proud. It's another thing to do something about it, and it's got to be done soon. Well, listen, I want to really thank you all and very much for all of the support that you've done for all of the projects with um, all through the years, all right? I know you're very involved, socially involved in the community. And uh, I really support you, okay? Well, I appreciate it very much. Thanks a lot, Neil. Okay, it's 11 past noon at WIOD. Both the Palm Beach lines are dormant in Boca 278 WIOD and in Palm Beach 655 9463. That, that, that just really touched on something. I mean, you had your Camillus House campaign and you raised about $40,000 here. You tried to destroy that. Well, I, yeah, I know, that. I know that. With but, letters to but, uh, Le Dexter Layton and suggesting that we were sending obscenity through the U.S. mail. Right, and could you imagine, though, if. if someone used the amount of time that's gone into this campaign for some positive end. But I, I the, mentioned the to somebody to yesterday, do? I don't see, mo I, I don't want to generalize, but I don't see most right-wingers doing those things. Most of them are right. too busy pointing the finger and accusing and conducting witch hunts and not involved. You know, Bush talks about this nebulous thousand points of light, which nobody knows what the hell he's talking about, including him. Uh, but, you know, as far as really getting down and involved in concrete projects and helping people who need your help and doing the kinds of things that we did with the Camillus House, you don't find it from right-wingers, many, many of whom are su supposedly born-again Christians and holier than thou. Well, the if they're so Christian, how come they're not involved in helping? Well, I, these other I don't people? think the way he conducted himself, at least certainly in my case, and, and so I guess yours even more so in yours, has anything that at all in resemblance to Christianity and the spirit of love and kindness. Twelve minutes afternoon at WIOD. I want to tell you about twelve sixteen at WIOD. Boy, where's Paul Harvey when you need him? <laughs> I just want to tell you a little episode. I don't want to keep referring to this other situation forever because the guy made a good point. It does. It, it interferes with the show and interferes with our ability to do the show. But I'm trying to think of one business that really um, was overwhelmed by this individual and his comments about me and all the threats and so on. Remember we used to do those appearances at Emac and Bolio's, the sure. ice cream store up mm -hmm. in um, Lauder Hill, where we had 2,000 people on two different occasions yeah. and where they had the two biggest days in business that they ever had up there? They're out of business. 
And they didn't advertise with us. And one of the main considerations in their not advertising with us were these phone calls that they kept getting from this individual, our friend down in Coral Gables. They're out of business. Yeah. Anyway, I just mentioned that in passing. It's 1217 at WIOD. We have an open line in Boca at 278-9463. Mobile in West Palm. Hello. Hey, Neil. Yeah. How you doing? Okay. Emerald Bird. Hi. Uh, Neil, this is Big C from Pahokee. I'm on my way down 95 here. i got to take some cherry pies down to Cubics. Okay. Anyway, seriously, Neil, I agree yeah, with getting the previous... cereal. Uh, <laughs> yeah, I'm, I'm real cereal, right? Uh... I agree with the previous call. You know, I've been listening to you a long time. I live in Stewart, my office in Pahokee, and I used to catch you on the morning show on the, you know, on that FM station. Yeah, the, the FM, yeah. They used to be on the air, yeah. All right, I used to drop three little girls off every morning at the high school, Stewart, Martin County High School, and, man, they go wild over you. you know, and the, all this crap now is, is just taking too much. And I, I think the numbers ought to show that, you know, us guys out here uh, and your audience, really does enjoy you. I, I don't understand uh, and you have to say the uh, Mr. X from uh, Coral Gables, uh, you, aren't you about to mention his name at all? I don't want to dignify him by mentioning his name, okay? Uh, I mean, I, I, I think it sucks, to tell you the truth, really. Uh, if I don't want to listen to you, this, well, this Continental has got a goddamn dial on it, you know, and I can pop it. Well, that's the thing. You know, community standards are supposed to be one of the gauges and obviously the, his track record here the way the audience follows them from station to station would seem to indicate that there are thousands upon thousands of more people who uh, in agree with what he does and enjoy what he does than there is this one individual and his rapidly diminishing uh, legion of, of followers uh, who uh, who are offended by it. And, and the, the alternative, like you say, is turn the dial. If you don't like it, turn the dial. You know, Tom, I, I, I totally agree with you, but the point is this, that... I consider myself, I don't know this guy, I really don't care to know him, okay? Uh, I consider myself to be as important in life as he is. I, and I happen to enjoy listening to Neil Rogers and the bird, especially really better when they're on at 6 in the morning to 10 because you get out of bed and the guy made you feel alive. I, where the hell does he get the right to come out here and tell me and, and, and all the other listeners that enjoy Neil that we can't? Well, I'll tell you why. Th there's a bigger issue than that, really. <clears throat> and, and again, I like to approach this from, from the point of the entire broadcast industry and, and other things rather than just individualize it down to Neil. Because when these things succeed, they tend to expand. But this is the issue. Someone I know who was involved in the practice of law became aware and saw some of the papers that have been filed and the state's response to a lot of the charges that have been filed. And he, and he said, I don't know whether to laugh or to cry. He said, the whole thing is so ludicrous, I should be laughing. He says, but having been involved with the law, I know the amount of hours and the amount of money that these public officials, these taxpayer-supported people, have to spend responding to these complaints. And he says, if the public was ever aware of what it's costing the state of Florida to answer to these charges, which they've, they've said uh, just have no foundation, he said that th there would be an uproar. It's costing the taxpayers God knows how many thousands of dollars to, to more or less appease this single individual. Huh. Yeah, I, I, I can understand that because I'm sure that the state doesn't uh, we're do talking, anything that's economical. We're I mean, talking not, about a choked court system. We're talking about police who are overwhelmed with the crime problem, and they've got to run around answering to these to these silly allegations. All right, since, since you are in, uh, in the media, uh, more so maybe than Neil, because you're uh, more commentary and you're, and you're read by uh, quite a few people every day, what would you suggest that Neil's or any talk show, per se, I don't care that much for uh, uh, Steve Kane. I really never listened to him much until... It's not an issue of individuals. Thing, but what, what can we do? It's, it's, it's not an issue of individuals. It's an issue of one person setting right, okay, himself so what, up what as a censor. It? What what can, can we, can unfortunately, nothing, because this person knows how to use the law and to stay, to, at least to this point, it hasn't been determined that he's done anything outside the boundaries of the law. There might be, uh, down the road, maybe there'll be a different determination made, but as of right now, he's well within his rights, and it just shows how... Well, he's not, well within, his, well, Tom, he's this not well within his rights, and he never has been within his rights to harass people, to make no, threats. but it hasn't been determined yeah. that he's done that. Down yeah, the no, road, it that has been be. very clearly determined that he's done it. The fact that it hasn't gone to court yet is one thing, 
but to say that he's well within his rights to call people and threaten to hold press conferences and expose them for advertising on obscene and pornographic radio shows, that's not acceptable. To take people's words and twist them and manipulate them and lie about the intent of what somebody says on the air, that's not within his rights. That's not the First Amendment. That's butchering the First Amendment. And, but, and Neil, Neil, can I say one thing, Neil? Yeah. I, I, I listen to you as much as I can, okay? Unfortunately, I run a business, and during the day it's rough uh, from 10 to 2, but on the road like I am now, you're constantly on the radio, okay? Uh, I, I think it's unfair in a way to your public, and I consider myself to be one of your public, uh, as I really don't know who the hell you're talking about down there, and I'd like to, you know, can I call Tom Jick up at the paper tomorrow and find out who this guy is? I'd like to know. Well, it's been reported in all the papers. I'd rather you didn't do that for the very reason that he would, he might then twist it and claim that I've in, incited you in some way I saw, to, to somebody, threaten or harass him. Uh, it, Tom, it's been well mentioned in the papers. Tom, how does somebody that lives in Stewart, where we get the lovely Stewart News and, uh, you know, the Palm Beach Post, which is uh, next to dead, uh, how does he find out, out of curiosity, who the hell this guy is? I'll tell you what. You call me at the paper, and I'll read you the story out of the newspaper. That's all I'll do. Uh, I appreciate that. And, and, and what uh, I said before, all I was doing was giving him what he hasn't given other people, and that's the right of presumption until proven guilty. I happen to agree he's distorted and twisted and abused the law. You do realize I'm he, will, giving him he will now quote you on that and say that Tom... I, have, I, I he personally will. believe that. I didn't say legally he did. I happen to believe that he did, and that... But I'm giving him the benefit of the doubt until a court determines that he has. No, no, you don't understand what I'm saying. He's going to quote you on having said that he's well within his legal rights with what he's doing. To this moment, because he hasn't been found guilty of doing anything. That's as far as I go. I'm that, giving... Tom, that would be like saying that Ted Bundy was within his legal rights by going out and murdering people until he was caught. Well, he was innocent until he was proven guilty. That's the only thing, that's the only assumption I'll give. Well, there's a I big, mean, the big, you know difference, how I feel about big this. difference in saying somebody is convicted of doing something wrong and somebody is within their, within right, their yeah, rights maybe, of doing something Maybe I phrased wrong. it poorly, but you know how I feel about it. I mean, I th I, I, I'm just, I'm disgusted by what's gone on, and, uh, and I have full faith that eventually the legal system will. Well, I'm glad that you do, because I, I have no faith in the legal system. None. Zero. And I have listened to these corporate attorneys and these Washington FCC attorneys, and I've listened to their ridiculous behavior, and I've seen the way they've made us take material off the air and, and cowered and catered to one individual in a community who has no more standing than anybody else. And I, I find it embarrassing, their behavior. Oh, I their, agree with their that. Their cowardice and their behavior, I think, is appalling. And they have they, these, these attorneys collectively have balls the size of peanuts, okay? It's 24 minutes past noon at WIOD. I want to tell you about an amazing emergency medical uh, device called Life Phone. And it's a little pendant that the individual wears around their neck. And if you fall down a stairway, have any kind of a medical or other kind of emergency. More with Neil Rogers on News Talk Radio 610. WIOD. 1228 at WIOD. Tom Jicka is our guest, the TV and radio writer for the Fort Lauderdale News Sun Center. We want to thank our friends at Flora's. They yes. did it again. Carmine, right. you're the best. Yeah, they came through. Delicious. Yeah, we've been it? sitting here eating and forgot all about thanking them, man. Enough food for the Chinese army. I noticed somebody very quietly has already sucked up lunch completely. <laughs> A meatball sucks. Not to mention any names, okay? Now, as I recall, Tom, when you had all the uh, problems with the Miami News and all that hubbub was going on that famous week you talk yeah. about, Hell Week, we refer to that as, as I recall, the way you exonerated yourself and got off the hook for what you did was getting a tape of Neil I brought show. a tape of the program, right. and, and I showed them that I hadn't done anything wrong. One of the more ridiculous charges to show, you know, how this person operates is he wrote a letter to my superiors saying, and to other people, saying that I had called him a lunatic on the air. Uh -huh. Well, in fact, this is exactly what happened, as the tape showed. Someone called up that morning on the program and said that they had watched a movie, I believe it was on Channel 39, and that they had heard the F word, and mm -hmm. how did the station get away with that? And I said, and this is just about a direct quote to the comma, I said, except for some lunatics who have nothing better to do with their time than to sit around and monitor television and radio stations and write complaints to the FCC, nobody cares. Mm -hmm. This individual took it to, to put the shoe on himself, that I had <laughs> called him a lunatic, which I wasn't. I was referring to a general class of people throughout the United States who sit and do that type of activity. But he said, no, I had called him a lunatic, and that was the extent of the letter that he, that he sent to, uh, to my superiors. Thank God there was a tape of the program, and mm -hmm. I was able to show them, and they realized that, yes, you know, that, that the whole thing... But this is how mm -hmm. there's a, a, a pattern of, of just trying to, to hurt... But that week, until I got a copy of that tape, I didn't get a, a copy until Friday, mm -hmm. the suspicion was there all week. Right. And, and I had to live with it. 
Mm. And, and, and in addition to the suspicion came the stream of letters. And the stream of letters followed by follow-up letters from some of the people who had been contacted by this person. And, and again, what did I do? Well, I guess that my, my sin was coming on the Neil Rogers show and not falling into line on his campaign. Mm -hmm. Okay, 1230 at WIOD, we have an open line in Boca, 278-9463, and opening in Palm Beach, 655-WIOD. Miami, hello. Hey, Neil um, and Tom and uh, the bird, how you all doing? I hope you're doing okay. He is destroying your show, though, by, by one reasoning. He's making you discuss this, and, and it's taken away from the fun that's you true. usually have. And mm -hmm. that's and, and in essence, he's going to end up driving people away because they're going to get, I, I, understandably so, from your standpoint. I mean, you've got to talk about this, but you understand what I'm saying? Oh, absolutely. There's no question about it. He's not only that, but they've already um, taken a lot of our material out of here that we were playing earlier with their, with their full approval. And, uh, you know, he's being allowed to have the same kind of well, chilling... Well, can he? Why can't well, you... Will you let me finish the sure, sentence, please? Sure, sure, He's being allowed to have the same kind of chilling effect on the content of this program that he was allowed to at the other station. And the bottom line is that none of the material that we played over there was found to be obscene or improper at WINZ. There's absolutely nothing in their FCC file, that indicate, and they investigated it completely. There was nothing wrong with it then. There shouldn't be anything wrong with it now. And that's why when you're dealing with cowardly attorneys sitting up in Washington, you wind up sacrificing and giving in and caving in to one fanatical individual, and that is sinful. It's absolutely unacceptable. And that's exactly what happened to me in the one instance where there was a, an apology printed in the paper. Uh, it was done because, again, an attorney who said, Tom, you didn't do anything wrong, but let's take the course of least resistance. Yeah, that's always the attitude. Let's take the course of least resistance. Let's cave in. Let's back away. Let's run away. And it doesn't do any good because when you eliminate the material he objects to on Monday, on Tuesday he's got a whole new batch of material because that's the way a witch hunt works, okay? Well, I it just, just never stops. I just can't understand how this person... I mean, if, if it was proven once not to be obscene or bad or anything, how can he continue to intimidate another... I mean, the another station... You just bring them a file that says, hey, look, they did the investigation once. It was not proved to be obscene. Because, as I explained it, I can explain it in my case, what the attorney told me. He says, Tom, you did nothing wrong. You'd be exonerated. And seventy five dollars to $100,000 later, you would find that out. Well, radio stations are in business to make money. Newspapers are in business to make money. And I don't have that kind of money to spend. This is unbelievable. I just cannot believe that this is going on. And when Jeff... Well, I can't believe that the people in the legal profession in this community are sitting back on their collective asses because it reflects on each and every one of them when somebody who is a member of their little closed fraternity is behaving like this and conducting a witch hunt, and uh, when they're not focusing the spotlight and, and, you know, doing everything in their power to stop it, it reflects very poorly on each and every single one of them, and it also reflects very poorly on the judge in Dade County who sat half asleep during our hearing when we asked desperately for an injunction against this and was more interested in going to lunch than giving us a fair hearing and listening to really what the facts were in the case. Exactly. Well, you know, Neil, uh, and if you want to dump my name, you can. My, na my name is Kevin Clements, and um, I wrote a letter... I don't know if uh, Mr. Disney showed it to you or not. I did write a letter um, several weeks ago. Um, I do work uh, nearby one of your uh, sponsors, the Pizza Loft, and I have started frequently there. And Mr. Cohen, the owner, um, I've become you know, a regular customer of his, and he knows who I am, and he knows how I learned of his establishment mm -hmm. and how, I've, uh, how I have uh, you know, started supporting his, his business. And the re and I even asked him had had he had any harassment. And he said yes. He's even had harassment. That's because he's a sponsor, my friend. And every single sponsor it's who advertises on this show is harassed and threatened and intimidated. And thank, thank goodness, God thank goodness, God. most of them have the courage to uh, tell this individual to take a flying leap because they advertise for results, and we get them all tremendous results, and that's why they advertise, not because they're here to be fans or anything else. They advertise because we get them tremendous response. But believe me, I went there because I had heard it on your show, but yeah. I wouldn't have gone back if I didn't like the food. The food there is tremendous, and it is somebody that, that should be, but you shouldn't go somewhere just because, uh, you know, out of spite of this person, but you should go there also because these places are good you know, good establishments to go, and I know that Neil has enough credibility that he would not put somebody on there he did not believe in, and and I, 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 I just I just can't believe that this is being allowed to go on, and that I, you know, I, I just can't 
I can't. Well, I, I, you're speechless, and so am I. And I appreciate your support, <laughs> but uh, I understand that you're apoplectic. And believe me, if you think you're apoplectic, yeah. you can imagine how I feel, especially when I'm constantly being told. You know, it's it's like the same pattern unfolding again. In the beginning, it's complete support. We're a thousand percent behind you. And we're this and we're that. And then all of a sudden, little bits and pieces of material start disappearing. And then there's the disgruntlement with the fact that the the legal bills are mounting, and they point to, oh boy, this is costing us a fortune in legal bills. Well, you know, the bottom line is somebody has to have some backbone somewhere and stand up and say, we're not going to take it anymore, and we're going to turn the tables around, and we're going to do everything in our power and use all of the resources. This company's only worth $2.5 billion, the sisters you talked about. $4.5 billion. dollars. <laughs> take those resources and turn them full blast against this because this is fascism, and it's got to stop, okay? And if they aren't willing to do it, I'll find somebody who is. It's 12.36 at WIOD. The winning continues. 12.39 at WIOD. Our guest is Tom Jicka. We're here primarily to talk about radio and TV, although we seem to be all over the place here today. We have an open line in Dade, 751-9463, and one, of course, in Palm Beach. We can't, hmm. we can't cut it with Lee up there. 655-WIOD, <laughs> a mobile in Miami. Hello. Hi, good afternoon, Neil. Yeah. Uh, last time I talked to you, you were doing nights, and you were fighting a bill that would have put health food stores out of business. I gave you a call and gave you a list of all the names of the South Florida legislators who sat on the committee that was hearing the bill, and your listeners called in, and the bill was killed. Uh, last time I talked to Tom, we were trying to save Sledgehammer, I think, on ABC. <laughs> um, I, I just wanted to, to offer uh, a couple of things. Uh, first of all, I'm chairman of the board of our local Young Republicans Club, and I was part of the... Uh, machinations behind the Rogers Kane Act. That well, they, we, we appreciate that, by the way. Well, we're going to file a resolution tonight. We've got a YR meeting, and we're going to file a resolution tonight supporting you and Steve, because I think one way of fighting this guy, and, and uh, I'll be more than happy to add my name to his enemies list, uh, one way that we can fight this guy is where he lives, and he lives in right-wing circles. He lives in Republican circles. I think if, if we show... Uh, tangibly that his base is even beginning to erode, that he might start smelling the coffee and knocking this uh, business off. I think you probably create a modest syndrome. That's my opinion. Well, I know that, that these people also thrive on persecution, but I, I think if we show that, that right-thinking people, you'll forgive the expression, right-thinking people everywhere uh, detest what this guy is doing, that, uh, that at least we'll build so much popular support across the board for uh, for the concept of what you guys stand for that that he'll find that the percentages uh, percentages aren't in his favor at all uh, I might suggest another thing too Neil uh, what about starting something called the first Amendment fund that everybody in South Florida could contribute to to help pay for the legal expenses whenever you guys are up against the wall well I, I know you know I just don't think that that would be ethical at all because uh, you know I'm a private individual and this is a, a private corporation. And, uh, you know, for better or worse, we're going to have to, uh, you know, take care of our own legal fees, which are astronomical, by the way. But uh, I just, I don't think that that would be ethical in accordance with broadcast, uh, you know, ethics. I just can't see doing that. Yeah, I, I can understand that. I'd sure love to Spe see Especially for a company that's, you know, got assets of $4.5 billion. I think it would be pretty, you know, with people sleeping on the streets and yeah. starving. I mean, I don't mind, you know, I love raising money for causes like that. But to expect the public to subsidize this uh, defense against this witch hunt, that just, I don't think, would be appropriate. Again, I, I bring up the point, though, the thing that's amazing is that everybody is listening to this program and is appalled by what's going on and who enjoys this program and all who just stands for the basic principles of free speech is supporting the other side of this campaign through their tax dollars because it's tax dollars that are being used to investigate all these complaints, however lacking in substance they might be. Yeah, it's, it's so unfortunate. You know, I can't help but think if the tables were turned, and let's just say that the people for the American way were trying to get the late John Broward off the air. Uh, uh, that the, that you, you notice that never happens, by the way. Right. You notice that people on the left, for all the accusations of communism and socialism and all of that, uh, those of us on the left have never been engaged in the, that kind of activity of trying to deprive anybody with a different point of view from speaking out. You know, our, our young Republican club has had uh, its own run-in with uh, with this individual in our uh, newspaper that we published monthly. We once wrote a little uh, uh, little snippet that that was taken as being uh, unkind toward Mike Thompson. About a week after the publication and distribution of the newspaper, we got a letter from from this individual stating they were going to take us to court unless we printed a retraction. What we did was we allowed him to print his comments, which were published uh, in the following month's newsletter after those comments had been heavily edited by our own staff. Mm -hmm. So we've had our own run-in with this guy, and uh, 
Uh, I just think it's so unfortunate, so unfortunate. And, and right-thinking people everywhere, we've just got to keep up that letter-writing campaign and let the station know that, uh, that, that we're behind you guys, and we also have to patronize your advertisers to show them that, uh, that we're behind them as well. Isn't it interesting that as this thing unfolds, that what's emerging is a pattern that one person has set himself up on an arbiter on who you can say about what, when, how? I'll, I'll give you, uh, you know, the, again, the audience may tire of hearing some of this, but to me it's important that they understand just how deep and how far and how pervasive this witch hunt has gone. I'll give you an example, because it included um, even Stan Major when we were overworking for mm -hmm. Gannett. And Stan had a theme, one the, probably the most creative thing that J. Michaels has ever done in his life, that thing was to the tune of My Girl, Stan Major theme, okay, yeah. where they would sing Stan Major and so on. We used to play it. It was just a hysterically funny and well-done piece of music. It was a song parody, which the comedy networks that are all around the country, professional comedy networks that radio stations subscribe to, do song parodies. Very often they don't waste time getting clearance because it's, just, it's not done for profit. It's just done for humor and entertainment. It's not something that's sold in a record store or anything like that. It is traditionally part of the business, okay, that people just spoof other people's work and don't have to worry about getting clearance. Well, it seems that our friend took the time, and he's done this, I don't know how many occasions. He did it with a Neil Diamond piece that Jay America did, Neil in the Morning. Took the time to write to Motown, to Barry okay. Gordy Jr. and the president of Motown, and let them know that we were stealing this work of The Temptations and doing the song parody without paying them rights for it, etc., to the point where we received threatening letters from the legal people with Motown, and we had to stop. And, of course, keep in mind that he does it on the legal letterhead as an attorney, mm -hmm. again, and, uh, you know, and again, the, the, the comment from it, well, trying to make Neil Rogers obey the law. It's got nothing to do with the law. It's got to do with what is accepted in common practice in this business, and that is that song parodies and spoofs and takeoffs like that are done routinely without any red tape and without any clearance. That's just part of the standard of the industry, okay? Well, you've got well, that goes it. along to the comments I made that, that he that he twisted and distorted and sent to people. They were said, they were said in jest. So when, it were starts, so when it starts affecting even the material, even harmless material that we can play on the air and limiting to a great degree the, the sphere of, of material that we can use for humor or entertainment or what have you, you bet your life that's interfering with our right to do business and our right to, to make a living. Yeah, absolutely. And you've got the new piece to the, uh, to the killing of Georgie, which I think is brilliant. And um, uh, it, it's just... It's well, we'll see how long it takes for that letter to go out. Yeah, boy, that's the truth. But uh, I just, you know, I just want to reiterate that there are a lot of people out there behind you. It was, it was, I was having a new dryer delivered yesterday, and I had you on, and uh, the delivery guy came in and said, boy, isn't it incredible what they're doing to Neil? And I said, you got that right, pal. Yeah, well, we'll see. You know, again, this company has been very good and very supportive, at least to this point. I'm a little bit nervous because I've been through the same experience with Gannett before. And I'm not trying to compare the two companies because Gannett is a mom-and-pop operation compared to Cox. But uh, I still notice a certain amount of wavering and nervousness, and that especially with their attorneys in Washington, and back away from this and back away from that. I'm not going to back away from anybody, okay? I'm sick and tired of being put on the defensive and backing away. We haven't done a goddamn thing wrong on the year over the last two years. I haven't done anything wrong over the last 29 years that I've been in this business. Whatever I've done on the year has been entertainment, has been educational, has been whatever it's been. It's been well within the bounds of FCC guidelines, which I think I understand better than some of the people in upper level management. So, you know, if people think that I'm going to continue backing away and backing away and backing away, they're in a dream world because it ain't going to happen. It just That's isn't right. going to happen. That's right. Tom, what do you think of the idea of, of a private individual party not connected with the with the radio or TV industry putting a fund together? No, I kind of agree with what Neil said. I think there are better causes that you could give your money to. Yeah, I, absolutely, I just think that, no, you know, we, can't, we couldn't possibly moral, begin to moral support that. is fine. Yeah. I just say, well, I, I, I kind of applaud what you're doing because I agree with you that this man travels in right-wing circles and, and I think that, you know, as I said, the thing that's eventually going to turn the, the tide, I think, is when the circle narrows to such an extent that he's talking to himself. Yeah. Good point. Okay. okay, we appreciate your help, believe me. Take care. Thanks a lot. 1248 at WYOD, I want to tell you about the Pizza Loft's Fast Facts. O.D. Okay, 1250 <laughs> at WYOD, how was lunch, Tom? Terrific. Boy, thanks to those people. Thank you, Carmine. Really you guys are uh, continuing I got a second to astonish wind here. us. Yeah. Okay, we have an open line in Dade County, 751-WYOD, 751-9463. Tom Jicka is here for the duration. Miami, hello. Neil. Yeah. How are you hanging in there, man? I'm hanging. Good man. I just have a brief statement to make and hope you can bear with me. You know, I think that you really ought to be ashamed of yourself that, that you have opinions, that you stand up for what you believe in, 
and that uh, you even try to lead a semi-normal life. Yeah. You know? I mean, that's disgusting. You know, I don't know these goddamn douchebags don't get their heads out of their rectums and smell the roses instead of smelling what they're smelling. Well, I am referred to by this individual in letter after letter to people like uh, George Steinbrenner and people like Sam Jankovic at the U of M as a dangerous sociopath. Now, if I'm dangerous, I'd sure like to see the track record of all of the harmful and dangerous things that I've done in my lifetime. I'd like to see what they are. I'd like to see this documented. Well, you know, you all kind of scare me, too, because one would think that you might think this is America. Mm-hmm. <laughs> you know? Well, it is pretty revolutionary when you live in this town. You're right. I'm, get, I'm getting carried away, I know. And I'm re it's like expecting business cards, you know. It's the same kind of unrealistic attitude. Well, that's, that's all I had to say, man. You hang in there and uh, I'm Thanks a lot. You. Okay. <laughs> yeah. Uh... Three open lines, one in Dade, one in Broward, one, of course, in Palm Beach with Tom Jick. I'm just finishing up lunch, so don't mind me. Uh, Plantation, hello. Yes. Neil. Yeah. How you doing, buddy? Okay. I'm a retired police officer, and I know the, the mental strain you're going through now. But before I talk on that, there's a short fire way to get the, your company's support behind you. And I really don't want to go to it on the air. If you like to call me back or give Nick uh, my number. But back to what happened the other night. Uh, you were lucky in a way that that fellow came forward. Okay? Well, you're, oh, you bet your life I was, sure. Okay, but were you going to be a little hassled? An odd, uh, you know, odd uh, mention word going out to probably all the other police forces in this great town that we live in, which mm -hmm. is a hick town with long pants. Okay? They will now try to harass you in everything you do. A speeding ticket, they'll be watching you, they'll be doing everything in their power to stop you, to, to get your name back in the news. So, like, uh, what you have to do is just obey every little law and mm -hmm. do everything you have to yeah, do. Yeah, I'm thinking very seriously of going for the operation, you know, because I got the two puppies. Exactly. I have the two puppies, and i got to get them fixed anyway, so I think I'm going to see if I can't get, like, a three-for-one deal. <laughs> right. But, you know, once what? I have the operation, I'll be real mellow, and I won't be interested in any of those, um, you know, sexual things, and i just uh, mellow out, you know. Yeah, what I was saying to you, to be very candid and very serious, you were lucky in a way, because what they would have done, and I saw this happen a lot of times, with prostitutes, those dealers who weren't even dealing, who weren't even working that night, the prostitutes, they just sent the plant in there. They set up, uh, paid people off, set in the plant. Plant will say anything he wants to say, and it's your word against his. Yeah, no question about no it. No question about mm -hmm. it. So the other thing, to get the support of your station, and if it's going to work, then if someone would like to call me, I live in where you live, up in Jacaranda. Mm -hmm. And there's a way to do it, a way to get the support that you need. The letter writing, you know, people hate to write letters. It's just the idea of sitting down to write it. People are too busy. But there's a way where everybody will give you the support. Well, why can't we discuss it on the air? Well, it's lengthy. And uh, the thing it is, you heard, well, everything you have to do in life, you have to draw people, okay? You just can't get the letters. you got to have either a motorcade coming down there to show support, anything to bring people out. Mass of people will do, we saw it with Martin Luther King, we saw it with, old, with Gandhi, we saw it with a lot of people. If people love you the way we do, and they really want to support you, and they don't want you off the air, they got to get in their cars and come down there. And they got to let these people in your management know they can't stand for it. Again, you're in a hick town with long pants. Now, that's why they don't go after Howard Stern in New York, because Howard Stern, his company usually stands behind him, okay? And nobody is really going to hassle him. You, they're going to hassle, because you stood up for your rights, you came out with your own personal life, you told the world what you are. People don't like that. People love to live in closets, you know that. They love people to be in closets so everything is tidy and neat. But if you can get support... With a motorcade down there, and this will work because if the people are going to see support. There are a lot of your listeners all over this county. Everybody tells me every day we love Neil Rogers. I say to them, why don't you do something for him? They say, what are we going to do? They say, we ain't got time to write letters. We don't have time to do this. We don't have time to do that. Mm -hmm. But if we came to an organized... Well, if they don't have time to write a letter, how are they going to take time to get in their car and drive all the way down here from Hollywood simple. and Plantation and Tamarack no and Kendall? I'll tell you why. Because people rather drive than write. And people rather get up for a cause 
and sit down and write because they feel that's an individual thing and maybe they can't do anything. But when it's a mass support, they'll do it. I swear it happens. Okay, I appreciate your uh, suggestion. I'll give it some thought. I have my doubts because I think that when once you uh, try to yeah, congregate large yeah. numbers of people like that, it's um, there are insurance considerations and all kinds of possibilities of somebody disrupting it. It's just the kind of thing that the disturbers look for. So your intentions are very good. You know, the bottom line is this. Ratings came out, the new trends on Friday. I don't think this time period, on the, and we've only, there's two weeks of that was still from Alan yeah. Burke. Um, you know, not all of that number is ours, and yet we still have probably the highest number that this station has ever had in midday. Uh, I'm just looking here at uh, 25 to 54 is a 6-9, number two in the market, which is the highest certainly they've ever had in midday. In the history of the station I'm talking yeah. about, mm -hmm. and number one in men with an 8-8, okay, in, in all of all of the stations. Uh, so that's there. The billing is record-breaking, gone through the roof on this program and on the entire radio station. So it's not as though I should have to. In other words, coming in and trying to do a job every day, it's become much more agonizing and much more difficult as this stuff continues compounding and as the delay continues in trying to see some kind of beginning of a resolution to it. And, you know, the bottom line is, is there going to be some swift and some real strong and, you know, some real supportive response to it? Or are we going to continue sitting back at the advice of some nervous Nelly attorneys up in Washington who, as you say, and you, you hit it right on the head, keep advising, oh, play it safe and back away and don't play this and don't say this and don't do that. Are, are, are we going to be guided by that kind of nervous Nelly approach by a bunch of simple-minded douchebags up there? Or are the people going to really, you know, grow some, uh, grow some balls and, and, and really uh, say, hey, we're going to do what the hell we know is right, period, and that's the end of conversation, okay? And I got news for you. I've seen it at two different corporations. These attorneys that sit up there in Washington and bilk these corporations millions and millions and millions of dollars every year. Uh, it, what they're doing is un unconscionable, absolutely unconscionable, because they are taking away not only from the companies, they're taking away from the public their right to what they consider to be entertainment. Absolutely. Absolutely. And I'll stand by anything that I have ever said on the air, any material that we've ever played on the air, anything that we play now out of this rack, or anything that we played on either of the other two radio stations. I've been all over this country. I've heard the Howard Stearns, and I've heard the Steve Dolls, and I've heard those two wackos in Houston, and I've heard all the different guys, Gary D and the Grease Man and all these people, and I am telling you that anything, the wildest stuff that we've ever done pales into insignificance, including some of the stuff that goes on right next door here in the morning between 6 and 10 a.m. with Herman McBean, okay? And on Current Affair and on Inside Edition. and No question about it. So, you know, that, that's really the bottom line. I, I don't want to waste well, the whole Well, the point is, if this time, succeeds, what will be next? As I told Steve, if he got Neil off, he comes after you next. Mm -hmm. And you were right. Mm -hmm. Okay, we have an open line in Dade County. Tom will be with us till 2, so we have one more hour, TV, radio, whatever it is. 751-9463, uh, 751-WIOD. And if I can find, we've got so much paperwork here, man, it is ponderous. On Steve's show today... Uh, Patrick Sessions, the father of Tiffany Sessions, who's been missing since the 9th of February, mm. and Wayne Black, who's the lead investigator in that case, will be Steve's guest this afternoon. And then on Sports Talk tonight, 605, Joe Zagacki and Sonny Hirsch, and I wonder what they're going to be talking about on Sports Talk. Okay, <laughs> just just how many guesses Maybe do we'll you have need? a new coach. Maybe Could it'll be, happen something like that. Okay, anyway, stick around. We've got April Wortham with the 1 o'clock WIOD News, and we'll come back with Tom Jicka and your calls at 105. Presents Neil Rogers. To get in touch and talk, call 751 WIOD in Dade, 524 WIOD in Broward, or 655 and 278 WIOD in the Palm Beaches. Other areas may call collect. The opinions expressed by the host, guests, or callers are not necessarily those of the station. Now, here's Neil Rogers on News Talk Radio 610 WIOD. But anyway, it's 105 at WIOD. Tom Jick is here. He's uh, gesund and puppet, as they say in Chinese, full to the gills with some good lunch from Flores, and we're going to go back to your calls in Fort Lauderdale. Hello. Hi. Hi. Neil, um, I have a whole bunch of things that I've been writing down as I've been listening over the last few weeks, and if you just give me the time, I'd really like to say them because I'm real nervous, and this is the first time I've called. First, I'd like to ask you and Tom what you think of the show Night Caller. Night Caller. I don't, I don't Midnight watch Caller, it. you mean. Midnight Caller, I, don't right. I like it. it. I saw a few minutes of it. I just couldn't get into it. I like it a lot. Okay. I think it's a really good show, and I think if we had more shows like it and St. Elsewhere and L.A. Law and that type of thing, I think maybe we wouldn't have the... Um... I think Gary Cole's terrific. He's on a movie this coming Sunday night, too, a program called Those She, she Left Behind. Movie's really? okay. 
Okay. Um, I think if we had more shows that were of that quality, we probably wouldn't have the talk shows like the the crimes things. And well, no, I don't. I don't Maury agree with Povich, you there. And you really don't. No, I think, like I said before, people always want to look through other people's keyholes. I, well, it's just human possible. nature. The National Enquirer has been around for what thirty, forty, fifty years. Makes right. makes a fortune. Uh, people are always interested in other people's dirty laundry. That's true, but they do get repetitious and boring after a while. Well, never enough that they don't succeed. Well, that's that's true also. Um, what do you think of Larry King? Larry King? Mm -hmm. I don't think of Larry too much. I mean, Larry's okay. <laughs> I, you know, I don't listen to his program. Uh, I've met him a few times at the racetrack. I had <laughs> breakfast one day at his agent's house. Uh, he's a decent enough guy. Uh, I wouldn't cash a check for him. <laughs> I just meant as a talk show host. I didn't necessarily want his background. Yeah. Okay. Also, Neil, as far as all of this garbage that's going on with you, I really feel bad about it, and I think it's disgusting, which if we were not on the air, I could probably use some stronger words. Mm -hmm. But I do have something to say to your station, that I feel that you have brought their ratings up. And if people don't want to listen to you, and I know this has been said a n number of times, if they don't want to listen and they don't like what you're saying, then they can turn the dial. This is a free country, and you should be able to say what you want to say as long as you're not breaking the law. And we all know that you're not. You just happen to have one little miserable person who just has nothing else to do with his time, and his brain is probably bleached out by the sun. And I think if your station stood behind you and supported you, their ratings would probably go through the ceiling. Because everybody that knows you really appreciates what you are doing and would probably appreciate if they stood behind you. And the only one that's going to make anything out of this are the lawyers. Yeah, well, the lawyers are making a fortune out of it, and they got they those are. meters running 24 hours a day, seven days a week. And right. they're just, um, you know, again, I think uh, some of them giving extraordinarily poor advice. And, uh, you know, and, and, and if we continue bending and yielding and backing away, then we're not going to have anything left here anyway. I mean, well, if we no. don't have our show, then there's nothing. See, they can pay me. One, one thing they don't understand about me with this company, they can pay me $10 million a year, okay? And it doesn't, it doesn't make any difference if you can't live your life and if you don't have any peace of mind and if you're, you're under constant harassment and duress, it doesn't make any difference that you're being well paid, okay? You have to have some certain degree of sanity or it, it's useless, okay? I agree with you. There's also one other thing. You know, um, there are a lot of people out there that are on the road and do sales for a living. And it's, it's your show and, and a lot of shows like you, if they don't listen to you, I'm sure there are other talk show hosts that they would rather listen to than some of the junky music that's on. And it's very entertaining when you're stuck on I-95 to be able to sit there and laugh at one of your little um, musical tidbits that you play. I mean, some of them are just so fabulous that we just look at each other and say, oh, my God, that is such a riot. And people who are stuck in traffic or even people in the office really appreciate these things and i think it's very very unfair that one miserable person is trying to take well, this all away from you to me that that is the entire issue that one person is trying to deprive a lot of people of something that they obviously find a lot of entertainment in and you know some people might say well there are things some people like child pornography well it's different neil has been investigated now by just about everybody that has the power to launch an investigation it's been found that he's not doing anything that violates the law so what it comes down to is one person saying i'm going to decide for tens of thousands of people what they can hear and that that is the thing that bothers me all personalities aside as a critic as, as a follower of television and radio someone who writes about it I, the idea that one person could put himself in that position is just abhorrent to me. Well, he's thrilled with it. <laughs> I mean, he's, well, he he's, isn't going to be thrilled with the ultimate. He isn't going to be thrilled with the ultimate outcome. Okay, I'll guarantee you that. Oh, you can go I'm to the sure bank on that. It may take a long time, but I'm once sure the, of that. once I the Florida bar takes the appropriate action, and once the civil courts take their appropriate action and put a stop to it. Uh, he isn't going to be pleased with that outcome, okay? Just prolonging the inevitable. Oh, well, I just hope that your station stands behind you because if they don't, they would be very, very foolish not to because you definitely have your public behind you, whether you have your station or not. And they, it would only do a discredit to them if they didn't stay behind you on this. And I, I wish you all the luck in the world. And if there's anything that any of us can do out here, we would be more than happy to help you. And I'm sure I'm talking for a whole bunch of people. Okay, appreciate it okay, very much. Okay, bye-bye.
It's 11 after 1 at WIOD. We have an open line in Broward, 524-9463. Tom Jick is with us till 2. And I want to tell you right now about now. More with Neil Rogers on News Talk Radio 610, WIOD. 114 at WIOD with Tom Jicka. We have a chronic radio personality on 4. Hello. Hello, Neil. This is the first time caller. Uh... Yeah, right. <laughs> first, first time today, Cox. <laughs> hey, Bird. Hi, Tom. How you doing? Uh, good. Uh, two things. One, um, is it true that uh, the management of IOD has reneged on backing you on this deal? No, I haven't said that. I don't want to give anybody the wrong impression. They haven't reneged on backing me. It's just that, um, you know... Uh, well, let me I'm, ask you, are they I'm, taking I'm, stuff out of the control room? Are they taking your bits out of the control room? Oh, there's a lot of stuff that we had to take out, yeah. Mm -hmm. Well, uh, you know, hey, based on the advice again of their Washington attorneys, and I'm going to I'm going to say it again oh, oh that God. Washington attorneys, I wouldn't give you a nickel for the whole lot of them put together because they're all a bunch of scared rabbits. How long have we known that? Yeah, <laughs> isn't it amazing that you hire attorneys to defend you, and the first thing they usually tell you is do this to avoid us having to go to court. Well, they want first thing they ask you is for the money. The second thing they ask you is how do I get through this without having to do any paperwork? Yeah, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you know. Uh, secondly, you know, it, your bits are not any worse than the songs that are played on 90% of the radio stations in the city. If you listen to the words in the songs that I play, that everybody else plays. Well, there's one now wild thing that's fairly wild, isn't it? By Tone Loke. Yeah. Yeah. I, you know, have you heard the words in the songs that everybody plays in this city? I mean, and don't and don't you find it amazing that the same individual who's taking so much of his valuable time <laughs> to document everything that we play on this show isn't documenting the lyrics to all those songs that are being played I, on all I the other radio him, stations in this community? To, I invite him to listen to my show this afternoon and write down the words of the songs I play. I believe you'll be shocked. Good. We invite, <laughs> we invite him to do it. Power 96. Yes, just come right on, uh, whatever your name is. Okay. Uh, secondly, uh, a, a warning of sorts. Uh, don't get the Lenny Bruce syndrome. You know what happened. You know, he, he... Well, I know what happened to Lenny Bruce, but I don't know what you mean by the Lenny well, Bruce syndrome. Well, the Lenny Bruce syndrome was that he got so involved in, in trying to defend himself that he forgot to entertain. Yeah. You know? And, well, I understand uh, I, I, that. I, I, we, we, started that. Out, we, we started out here doing a show about radio and TV and cable here today, and that's what we yeah. mostly well, talked well, about I'm the saying, first no, hour I'm and a half. Saying, I'm not saying you're doing that by any stretch of the imagination. Yeah. What I'm saying is that it... it if it was me, I know I'd have to watch that because I'd want to climb up on a soapbox and give out this guy's home number <laughs> and jump his case. Mm -hmm. I mean, and probably would. <laughs> well, we'll see if he comes after you, Don. Oh, well, hey, it'll be fine. Okay. Good luck. <laughs> nice talking to you guys. Bye. Bye. 116 at WIOD. We have an open line in Broward, 524-9463. 524-WIOD. We're talking about kicking a hornet's nest, huh? Yeah. Hmm. Nobody makes an excellent point, and that is, and we've documented all of that stuff. Bill mm -hmm. Wise, we had to go through the trouble. I say we, they had to go through the trouble of going through a whole long list of a lot of these records that are being played on FM all over this market today with lyrics that are so far beyond anything that we would even dream of saying on this show or ever have said on this show in response to all of the FCC stuff. And they've got it all listed out in, you know, you can imagine what a laborious job that is. Just like our friend going through lyrics of all of those things that we played, some of which are pages long, and typing out word by word, paragraph by paragraph. I wonder if he knows <laughs> Now that's a good point. Something to uh, ponder. Boy, isn't it? isn't it? Miami, hello. I'm here. Yes, we're here. Neil. Yeah. Hi, how you doing? Okay. Okay, good. I uh, just want to preface uh, this before I ask a question. Uh, you know, I never listened to AM Radio before in my life until you came on the air. And uh, that only happened because somebody stole my radio out of my car, and that's all I had left. Yeah, well, we have a lot of that going on. We're getting a lot of FM radio stolen out of the car, so people will be forced to tune in this show. Well, I'll tell you, I'm glad it happened because I really enjoy your show. And uh, not only do I feel for you right now and what's going on, but I feel for myself because... I love listening to your show. It's a pleasure every day to listen to some fun. And right now, you know, all we're hearing is a lot of controversy. Mm -hmm. And I'm not saying that's bad. Oh, no, I agree with you. I think that the show is slowly but surely being taken away from us. And, uh, you know, there would be probably people in management who would say, well, you know, just uh, stop talking about it. But uh, you reach the point psychologically where this becomes so overwhelming over everything else that until there's, you know, at least some sign of some light at the end of the tunnel or some beginning of it, that, uh, you know, it, it keeps coming up just like it did today with Tom. It comes up during the course of the conversation, and then the audience jumps in on it, and that's all we've been talking about for the last hour and a half. Yeah, just like myself. I mean, I've never called before, but I'm calling now, 
because I, I really felt like I needed to say something. And, uh, you know, it's like I tried to call before. I could never get through. Your lines are jammed. I called twice and got through today, which is just makes the point that people aren't calling as much right now. What do you mean they're going to call in every line? How do, you mean this is the second time I've had you on? No, no, no. I called once and accidentally was disconnected by oh. a producer. Well, the lines are all full right now. It doesn't look to me like they're not oh, calling. Oh, well, you know... Uh, it's just unusual for me to get through to you, I guess that's what I'm saying, and maybe I'm just taking that point a little too far. But, you know, normally when I listen to talk show, it's all these heavy-duty issues that I don't even want to hear about. I want to listen and get entertained, and I think you and the bird do a great job doing that. But the question I wanted to ask Tom was, and I think I'm asking it to him because he might be able to be a little more objective, is what can we do to help? What, nothing. I mean, you know, uh, people have you know, done we already plenty. Went, we already went through that phase, you know, try to get people to write letters and send fax uh, messages on a fax machine and so on. And like I said the other day, for a couple of days there was an enormous response, and then no matter how many times I would bring it up again, just in passing and say, hey, you know, don't just stop now, it's just down to a trickle. They're basically, everybody who is the, the ty type of individual who will allow themselves to be motivated to take the time, the five minutes, to sit down and write a letter and put it in an envelope and stick a stamp and mail it, those people basically are exhausted, and the overwhelming the majority, the rest of the people, even the ones who enjoy these shows a lot, they're just not of the nature that they're going to take the time to do it. That's just mm. human nature, and it's unfortunate, but they're not going to do it. And ultimately, this won't be decided by letters written. It'll be decided probably in the courts. And the letters you would suggest to write to the station? Well, right? I would also suggest letters to the Florida Bar, okay? Okay. Because, you know, I've heard a lot of people giving suggestions, and I really just well, that's where I think most of the pressure needs to be exerted is directly at the Florida Bar because, I, you know, and their address again is uh, Suite 4, or let's see, it's 444 Brickle Avenue, Suite 211, Miami, and the zip code is 33131. And you don't have to be an attorney to pass comments along to the Florida Bar. If you think a member of the legal profession is stepping out of his bounds or uh, acting unethically or uh, violating the uh, legal code, you have just as much right as a citizen to write to them as anybody else does and say that they ought to be investigating it and doing something about it. That's where the first, I mean, the court things, those suits can drag on, man, for years in court. They can go on forever, especially when you're dealing with somebody who's an attorney and can, can handle his own case. He can drag that thing on forever. But the kind of immediate relief we need is something from the Florida Bar where they can look into this and see the kind of threats and harassment and the misuse of uh, legal ethics that's going on here and do something about it immediately. Neil, I can't wait till things get back to normal because I love your show. Okay, thanks a lot. Now, well, that makes a whole bunch of us, okay? Mm -hmm. 22 past 1 at WIOD. We have, see, I'll be honest with you, and I've tried, I've tried to convey this to the powers that be, and I've been in countless meetings. See, when I meet with the general manager of this radio station, there is not a single time not a single time that I meet with Mike Disney when this isn't the topic of conversation. Not a single time, ever, ever, when this isn't the topic of conversation. We should be talking radio. We should be talking, talking about the yeah. station. We should be talking about what makes the show better, what we need, what we can do, uh, you know, what, what's happening on the radio station. Those are the kinds of things we ought to be talking about. We're preoccupied with talking about all this sewage, and that's exactly what it is. And the same thing is happening to the show itself and to the radio station. And it, it's it's horrendous. This program today, I thought and we were going to talk about as, other things. Well, we started out, you notice, uh, you know, other than the first couple of minutes yeah. when I let you, you know, d disclose what happened to you during that week uh, last October, and we got away from that. We talked about what's happening in radio, which isn't much, and what with the TV and cable and so on. And now the last hour and a half, this is all that people want to talk about. But I would much prefer not to talk about it. I'd much prefer not to deal with it, not to hear the letters, not to hear any of the material, not to be overwhelmed with attorneys. Let those people who are paid to deal with those things deal with it and let us do a radio show. And don't keep telling us, you know, well, gee, we, the lawyers don't want you to play this, they don't want you to play that. No, you know, leave us alone. Let us do a show. We know what we're doing. we got the numbers here to back it up. i got a track record tomorrow is 13 years in this market. And with the exception of a couple of times when the Pope came to town and the Catholic Church tried to flex their muscle and get me off the air, which were very short-lived and very unsuccessful, but with the exception of that, I don't have any other problems with the exception of this witch hunt, okay? That's a long time to be on the air in this market, 13 years, and to be number one for 10 years on five different radio stations in three different time periods and basically have only one individual who wants to conduct a witch hunt. Broadcast McCarthyism. So if those individuals who are getting in, I keep hearing about all this gigantic money that the corporations pay and all these lawyers, let them pursue it vigorously and quickly and responsibly and take care of all of this other business, and I don't want to hear about it, and I don't want to have to discuss it. 
And that's the way I feel about it. You know, I, I keep hearing this individual say, oh, gee, I wish he would leave me alone. He's persecuting me. I've been delighted to leave that individual alone for 20 months now. I have no desire to mention him, his name, his family, anything on the year, if he'll go away and find something useful to do, which he seems unwilling to do. It's 124 at WIOD. If you're missing out on the Sports Channel of Florida, then you're really... Well, I'm glad he could get a hold of him. 126 at WIOD. <laughs> Tom Jick is our guest. Here's a mobile in Broward. Hello. Hello, Neil. Yeah. Er, Tom. Uh, I followed you around the dial since I've lived in Miami. I've been here 17 years. I followed you when you were at WNWS and just everywhere else you've been. This is the first time I've ever called you. And I think there are probably many people like me out here. Um, and I think that we should get behind you and not only do the calling but do the letter writing and so forth. I don't think he's exhausted the facts and the letter writing yet. And I know from my, my uh, point of view, you haven't, because you're going to get a letter from me tonight. Mm -hmm. um, another part of this, too, is um, we've talked about your sponsors being attacked and being uh, intimidated, et cetera. Who, is, uh, who are the sponsors of this man? You know? I mean, who is behind him? Who's behind him? I haven't got any idea. I don't know if this is strictly a one-man band or if there's somebody else uh, pulling the strings or subsidizing it. I have no way of knowing. Nice and that's the amazing part of this whole deal is that, you know, I've been investigated by everybody who's ever been born on the planet. Right. And, uh, and yet nobody... Here's a guy who ran for state attorney, I the know. number one law enforcement office in Dade County, the largest county in the state. And yet the news media did a pathetically pitiful job in exploring this individual's background. He got 151,000 votes, if my memory is correct. My opinion of that is that he intimidated them. Rather than deal with his nonsense, if you wrote anything... But don't you think when I somebody think runs for state attorney, we I have a right to know who that individual I, is I and what spoke, his background you is? You should know how many times I spoke up in our newsroom and said that it was disgraceful that we were abdicating our duty, that someone was running for office that had a background that people at least would be interested in. They could make their own judgments yeah. on it, but they should know about it, and they didn't do it, and, it, and I'm... For, I firmly convinced. I I'll go to my grave thinking that they were intimidated. They were afraid to print his background because they knew that he would harass them the way he's harassing well, isn't that, you. Isn't that a it's great disgusting. show of uh, courage? I can't, yeah. I can't think of a single candidate that was running that did not have something about their background surface. Yet I heard his ads on the radio. I never heard a single retort about him or anything contradicted about him at all. Everybody else was kind of, their lives was laid open. Mm -hmm. varying degrees. As it but should be when somebody's nothing, running for public nothing office. Nothing about him except what he had to say about himself. Uh, another idea, and I'd like you to check with your legal staff, or maybe an alternative legal staff, in light of the way yours is responding, to what can the, the listener out here do is basically disenfranchise from the whole process with the exception of calling and writing a letter. What can we do in terms of something like a class action suit? I mean, I feel like I have rights for being infringed upon and damaged by this individual. And I would like to know if there are many other people like me out here. Is well, I've had, people, I've had people write me letters uh, suggesting the same thing, and I just I don't know where to go with that. Maybe our attorney, Norm Kent, might have I some ideas because he's certainly well-versed in the law. But, but again, unfortunately, you know, the, the legal people in this community, with the exception of Norm, they seem to be in a vacuum somewhere. Well, we'll I'm sure that there are people out there who have expertise in those areas and know about class action suits and... You know, what kind of conditions are necessary to, you know, for people to get together and file one and how you go about doing it. But again, I'm not an attorney, so I'm know, in the dark. I know, but we need somebody to step forward who can give us that kind of leadership as a group because we're an amorphous mass out here. We have no, no way of rallying around that particular type yeah, of Yeah, well, that, that to me might really be the ultimate if, answer, if, okay? If someone builds an airport and it's noisy, the people will get together, file a class action suit, and interfere with that. I see this as almost the reverse. We have someone who's trying to not create noise, but create silence, and I object to that. I'd like to unite with people who feel similarly. One final point, too. Seems like to me you're kind of hung out to dry. You're fighting uh, an enemy, which is somewhat invisible in some respects, uh, invested in this person in Coral Gable. On the other hand, you know, where's your management? They seem to be invisible, too. I would like to hear Mike Disney or someone from Cox get on the air and say what their position is. I hear you telling them what you wish they would do. I hear nothing back from them directly except through you. Where are they? I say to Disney, I say to Cox Broadcasting, step forward. I've been a listener of Neil's for years. I patronize the sponsor. I'm on a car phone right now. I got because of him. I go to everywhere I can go. I, I try to check out, you know, who's there because of WIOD. And most of the people in there that I've contacted and been in touch with talk about you, talk about Steve. I think it's important to know that there's a carryover effect to what you do on your show to other shows on WIOD. And if you're damaged by this, I think part of the audience for the other shows is going to be damaged, too. I would like to see the management step forward and not sit back in the back offices letting you take the point on this whole thing.
Well, that's up to them. We'll see what they choose to do. But I appreciate your call, and maybe uh, one of our legal uh, experts out there in Radio Land will come out of the closet and uh, send us a letter, give us a call, let us know about the class action suit. Okay, good day. Thanks a lot. 131 at WIOD. We have an open line in Broward, 524-9463, Miami. Hello. Yes, uh, good afternoon, Steve and Tom. All right, Tom, I want to ask you a question. Uh, Neil just brought this up a few minutes ago, the Sports Channel of Florida, okay? I am on the Miami TCI. TCI is supposed to be the biggest cable company in, 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 the, in the country. Here, I have been calling them. I have written them. In fact, even on my cable bill, I say I want Sports Channel. I know many people in the system have called because they have, they have uh, told, you know, the people at the cable company have told me. But for some reason... Miami TCI, the biggest one in the country, does not want to give it to the subscribers. I mean, what? There's the not some there? reason. Cable companies own a piece of the Sunshine Cable Network. It's not some reason. It's a very good reason from a business point of view. Well, I, well, I, well, I have heard that many times. But the point is, we are the ones that are paying them. I mean, they're you know, paying the bill. And they just raised the cable rates there last month. Well, let me say it again, sir, without beating a dead horse, as I do during all of their commercials. I know, I call them up, get enough of your friends to call up your we cable have, company. We have, but they don't do keep, that. Well, keep calling You ready them. for this? I'll tell you something else that I found out last week, talking to the Sports Channel people about a piece I was writing. They just bought the company in Los Angeles that does Dodger games, and they're going to have, there's going to be many nights this year where they're going to have double headers with a Met game early and a Dodger game late. Yeah. Terrific. So that's something else that your company's cheating you out of. And all I can say is just keep raising hell. Maybe contact your congressman and say when the, when the issue comes up this spring in Congress about allowing the telephone company into cable that you want them to act, act favorably. And then let your cable company know that you're doing that. They're scared to death of the telephone company coming in. I guarantee you if even the specter is risen, you'll see your cable service improve immeasurably. 133 at WIOD with Tom Jicka. It's Tuesday, and that means it's Lobster Night at Shell's, those incredible live one and a quarter pound Maine lobsters. It's interesting. They got the exact number. It says 1,375 live Maine lobsters just boarded the morning <laughs> Delta flight out of Bangor, Maine this morning. And they'll be, they count them like one by one. It's incredible. <laughs> they all got names and ID yeah. cards, and the Bob Gilbertsons are checking them out at the airport in Maine. Lobster. And they'll be at the Miami International Airport this afternoon. They'll be picked up and divided among the five South Florida shells. W-I-O-D. 138 at W-I-O-D. Tom Jicka is our guest, and here's a call from West Palm Beach. Hello. Hi, Neil. How you doing? Okay. First time caller. Uh, what I wanted to call about, without changing the subject too much, first off, I'm in support of you, and anything that was ever decided is, can happen, I'll, I'll support it. Uh, secondly, for all the people that always complain about their cable companies, the best investment they can ever get is to just go out and get themselves a satellite dish. Well, we've said that a few times. I, I know. I mean, the other night I happened to trip over the um, press conference that they had, that the Cowboys had, that you'd never see that on television. Oh, hey, listen, the stuff that you come across that you will never see anyplace else, including just watching the news feeds yeah. and watching the different anchors standing around picking their nose and doing the right. different oh, things. Oh, yeah, and, I'm sure. And talking back and forth. I'm telling you, just, just the CNN stuff right. where you watch them feeding from Washington down to Atlanta and you watch them, uh, they, they put on their own makeup on CNN because it's low budget. Right. And you see Bernard Shaw sitting there with a the mirror putting makeup on his cheeks and combing his hair and uh, swearing at some of the guys in the background and mm -hmm. chewing everybody on. I mean, it, it's just, there's so much entertainment there, even <laughs> stuff that's like <laughs> throwaway really that's not programming. It's just incredible. Right. Uh, the real reason I called, though, it seems to me now on uh, the rating, say Zeta, where it's pretty flat all the way across the board. One yeah, it's five, flat. That's seven. a good word for it. Well, wh whatever. But does it, it doesn't seem that the reason why is they're taking personality out of radio on some stations now. Now I know. On well, TV, hot is the hottest thing in the market, and they put personality back into radio. But isn't that what sells? Well, it seems to be. It's sure working for hot. So then, why why are these other stations? It just seems. I, I was well, look at look at Zay, look at the INZ Zeta track record. They got rid of Keith Isley. Now he's the hottest program director in the market. They got rid of Neil. You know, and they they finally got everything in order. They got down from that abominable six down to that one point six that they want. But, uh, uh, it, you know, it seems to me you don't have to be a genius to figure this out. <laughs> I mean, seriously, it takes personality. I, I don't agree with you. I think I think there's you know a certain there's room for personality in certain kinds of radio. I think in music radio today. People are button pushers, and they punch up the button, and they want to hear something that they recognize and something they like. And Peter Bolger is one of the most stubborn people I've ever worked with in this business. He's a nice guy, but he's just stubborn, and he's been 
failing for two years with that same thing he did in Portland, Oregon, where he was successful. This isn't Portland, Oregon. It's a totally different market. You've got a different makeup here, a different mix of ethnic people. And, you know, you have to program to what their tastes are, and he the refuses to bad. do it. The music is horrendous. For mm-hmm. every one recognizable good, strong cut, there are two or three obscure cuts. That used to be the big joke over there. It has to be obscure to be a classic <laughs> on Zeta, because that's the kind of stuff that Bulger gravitates to, and the music sucks. If they were playing good, strong music, and, and I'm not saying this now because I'm working in this building, but when we worked over there, I used to tell them, Pete, I can punch up GTR, and nine out of every ten times, they'll be playing a better record than we're playing at any given time. And that's why yeah, GTR is doing about a four, and they're doing at one six. It's the music. Well, I still think the personality comes into it. Well, let me ask you this. Then how come the colonel was doing so well middays at GTR, and he's over there in the morning, the big shot, hot shot personality, doing a one six? Well, because they're not doing a hey, a they're not doing a music show over there in the morning. They're just uh, it's mostly fun and games. They're not playing any more music than we were, and they're doing a one six. And the big the big deal out of us leaving was supposed to be hey, now we can be classic rock twenty four hours a day, and we can load up the morning with a lot of that great classic rock. They're not even trying to play it. Well, honestly, the reason he's not why he has a one six is because he's not funny. Oh. But he was doing well on GTR, which again proves that he didn't have to be funny. It was the music that was carrying him. You don't have to be funny to have a personality. Yeah. But he was you know? doing a music show. You, you're right. You can, but, but it seems to me that a, a program director will come on now or, or go to his jocks and say, okay, you can or cannot back sell a record. You can or cannot do this. You, want it, you can or cannot talk over the music. It seems to me that, that a, uh, uh, a top-notch station will pretty much format everything a jock can say and, and it seems to me that's wrong and i just wanted to get your opinion on that that's all i don't know to me the the perfect mix probably of that is magic they have djs but it's it's primarily music they yeah. talk up to the records and you know maybe a little you know humorous exactly. comment here and there i don't, don't want to put anybody down i don't want to put anybody down to magic because we got some friends over there but i don't think it makes a damn bit of difference they could take everybody on that station and interchange them tomorrow and toss the lineup upside down and i don't think the numbers would change one tenth of a point no it's, it's still music because everybody that listens to that station is listening for the music even well, Ron St. John? Well, now I'm getting curious. <laughs> no, I mean, Joe Johnson has a nice pattern and everything, and he's a pleasant guy. And if you're going to have somebody, he certainly is good, probably better than most. But it, it, I don't listen to it for Joe Johnson. I listen for the music. Sure. Well, okay. Okay, so appreciate the call. and breathing people up here in Palm Beach, Neil, to support you. Well, thank God. Good Thanks luck. a lot. Uh-huh. 143 at WIOD. Let's go to Pompano. Hello. Hi, Tom and Neil. Yeah. Uh, I just got a couple of quick comments about cable, and then I want to ask you about an old show that find out if it's going to ever come out on video or if there's a way of getting... No, Alan Burke has gone to Philadelphia. (laughs) (laughs) Um, Did you hear that story, by the way, about the general manager and the sales manager both getting canned because they were the ones that brought him up there and he's doing so poorly that they both got fired? Is that right? I hadn't heard that. that. (laughs) The dean? The dean, yeah. (laughs) Dying. Our dean? Uh, You were talking about continental cable vision before. Uh, I, I... consider myself fortunate that I have them because they're a lot better than most of the cable companies around. The one thing that does aggravate me is they call you every they they have this sales um, thing that goes on and they call you and ask if you want this and that and you get it for free for this month. Well, the minute you do order it, because we get our TV guide through them, and I live in a a condominium, unfortunately, too, and uh, once you order something like that, um, my condominium pays for the basic cable. And there's a code they have to put in because if, when you order so many premium cables, you get TV Guide uh, as a special. Well, every time you say, okay, well, give me this, somebody forgets to put that code in and they cancel your TV Guide. So then it takes about four weeks to get it back again, which is ridiculous. Plus the fact is, is out in Tamarack is where they're trying their new fiber optic cable. Yeah. Why Tamarack? Well, because if it doesn't work, they figure the people that are so old, they'll never see the difference, okay? Like if it's a bad picture? Yeah, really. Did you ask them why you can't get Sports Channel and where WGN is? Yeah, WGN, that really aggravates me why you can't get that. I mm-hmm. get the sunshine. Uh, yeah, because, again, Continental has, uh, you know, got that incestuous relationship with Sunshine Network, like all the other cable operators do. And, uh, you know, all of the things I mentioned earlier in a commercial for the Sports Channel, Florida, we're not going to see. We're not going to see the NHL hockey. We're not going to see those college baseball games. We're not going to see uh, a lot of the other stuff because, uh, you know, Continental is more interested in that relationship than they are giving the viewers what they want to see. That's true. And another thing, I'd like to find out who the people are that are, are with HBO and 
Showtime, Cinemax, the movie channel, because these guys don't read their own schedules. I at one time had all four of those channels, and, and I don't know how many times a month you can turn to every one of those channels and they'll be running the same movie, if not at the same time, a couple of minutes apart. And it's ridiculous. So I've cut it down to two, and even with those two, which are not uh, owned by each other, they still run the same movie at the same time, half the time. Well, if they're the major titles, neither no, no station wants to be, you know, have, let, give the other one the opportunity to say we had it first. Yeah, that's true, too. The, um, the one show that I, I was interested in finding out about, I think it ran either in the late 50s or early 60s, and Jim Davis, I believe, was one of the stars, was Rescue 8. You remember that? Oh, boy. Wow. Uh, just vaguely. It, very uh, foggy memory. I don't think you're even going to see that in syndication. Mm -hmm. uh, it was it was very good from what I can remember. Maybe you'll see it. it on the Nostalgia Channel some night. I don't, you know, I, I couldn't have been on very long. Um, I don't believe it was. I think it was maybe on two seasons. Yeah, it, well, uh, I, I doubt, you know, you probably, maybe you might look in a video store, a real good video store, you might find some back episodes. Cool. I doubt it, though, yeah. And when are they going to release some of the old... Um, I refer to them as adult cartoons because they, they had a lot of comments in them that unless you were an adult, you'd never pick it up. Stuff like Bullwinkle and Rocky. and uh, Well, those are still Rocky around. Cooper. Those, those you got to find them, but they, they pop up from time to time here and there. Yeah. Yeah, um, Rocky and Bullwinkles, yeah, it's like a cult classic. That, and then they are around. Wasn't Hoppity Hooper also... I don't remember that one. <laughs> you don't remember Hoppity Hooper? With no, I'm afraid not, there. no. And I'd be embarrassed to call up anybody and ask him when you know, how many Hooper was going to be. <laughs> oh, here we have we have the Rescue Eight information. All Nick right, has brought boy, wait, brought wait, us Nick. the book, and we had to go to the book to get it. You know. All right. So uh, where is it? Wait a minute. Rescue. I bet you can't find Hoppity Rescue Hooper. Rescue Eight. Uh, Thirty minutes. It's uh, now syndicated. Fifty eight to fifty nine. They did seventy three episodes. Oh, the seventy three episodes. Wow. Yeah, it probably would be around somewhere. Oh, I see. They uh, turned it into a show called Emergency. Oh, oh. Emergency. yeah, yeah. Those rescue shows, you know. Right. Mm -hmm. Yeah, they they changed it to uh, Emergency. <laughs> and the funny thing about watching Rescue Eight is is a lot of the Huckleberry Hound cartoons when they're in a in a fierce chase. They used this one style of chase music that they used all the time on Rescue 8 when they pulled out of the barn to go mm -hmm. after mm -hmm. a rescue. It was really funny. Mm -hmm. Okay. One other thing, too. Yeah. Uh, there's one area you haven't covered, Neil. I think you should get on the bandwagon and write a book so that you shouldn't be the only one on a hit list. You know, radio is not enough for you. You know, you're only getting threatened with pull, being pulled off the air. You should write a book like Salman Rushdie. Yeah, I'll move, can... I'll move to Tehran and see if that does any good. 148 of WIOD want to tell you about ARPCO and the great job they do of painting your automobiles. Paint jobs from as little as 125 bucks, and I'm talking about outstanding paint jobs at affordable prices. And don't forget that great ARPCO special offer for Neil Rogers listeners. The Neil Rogers Supreme Paint Job, it's limited solely to their Dade County locations, by the way. It includes the repair of all nicks and scratches on your car. They will spray a prime sealer coating the, covering the entire car. Three coats spray of your car with polyurethane, catalyzed enamel with clear coat. And ARPCO guarantees the job for three years against peeling, cracking, or fading. The regular price on this Supreme Paint Job is 300 guests. Mm -hmm. Now let's go to Deerfield. Hello. Yeah, this is Hoppity Hooper calling from Deerfield. Now, Tom, we've, been, we've been wondering where you were. I have a, quest, a couple of questions for Tom. First of all, did any of you guys see an incredible show on TV last night called What's Alan Watching? Wasn't that good? Holy what was cow, that was What's incredible. Alan Watching? It yeah. was a pilot from Eddie Murphy made it, and it was funny as, oh, God. Now, it are was, they going to come back with another? Uh, no, that that's a one-time only deal, but it was a pilot, and, and so it'll either wind, I would say the best chance is that it'll wind up on the fall schedule. It got incredible reviews around the country. Uh, okay, the other question I have was about Wonder Years. I wanted to know what you thought about that show, and do you think Pat, the Pat Sajak show has any redeeming qualities? Well, it, it, it's an alternative to Carson. It's the same show with a younger guy. But uh, And as far as the Wonder Years, the Wonder Years are suffering from the Moonlighting Syndrome. They can't get enough original episodes on the air. It was a marvelous show last year. It was one of my favorite programs, but it, it has almost as many reruns as, as Moonlighting, and I can't really? understand why. I didn't catch up with it until this year. Yeah. And uh, I haven't seen any reruns and it's just a wonderful show. The Say Jack yeah. show is doomed, I believe. I just, uh, he's, you know, he can carry that off on a quiz show for half an hour and be cute and low-key and some very wry humor, but to carry it off for an hour, an hour and a half, 
He just It's just not there. Well, there are two reasons why he's on there. One, they want to have a presence. They feel that if they can hang on for two years, three years, however long it takes, that when Carson leaves the air, then they'll have the, the number one guy on. It's the same principle. If you remember, Huntley and Brinkley were the number one news team on television, and Walter Cronkite was number two. And then when Huntley and Brinkley went off the air, Cronkite just inherited that Dean's label. And, uh, <laughs> and they're hoping for the same thing with Sajak. The other thing is... The only is, difference is that... Uh, Cronkite was good. Yeah. The other thing is, though, that when uh, before they put Sajak on, they had no clearances. Like here, everybody, they, all the CBS affiliates were running their own programs at 11:30, whether it be Magnum reruns mm -hmm. or reruns of Mash or whatever. At least with Sajak, they've got about 95, 96 percent clearance around the country. So the network gets they have a presence where they had none before. So for those two reasons, it's working. And uh, you know how well it, it, it'll succeed. Uh, I don't know. Like I say, Sajak is exactly the same as Carson. He's Midwest. He's totally white bread. Uh, he does, the show is structured exactly the same. He comes out, he does the monologue, he, go, he goofs around with the band, he talks about the network, he goes over and schmoozes with a with a, a guy with no personality whatsoever, mm -hmm. and then he, he introduced the guest. It's, it's, the, it's just a clone of the Carson show, and what they're hoping is that when Carson finally packs it in, they'll be the one sitting there. Any predictions on Joan Rivers' return? I don't think she'll do very well. Joan Rivers doesn't play well in large doses. Okay, thank you. Enjoy your show. Okay, thanks. Uh, Oakland Park, hello. Hey, Neil, how you doing? Okay. Hey, Tom, how you doing? Okay. Hey, Tom, I want to get your opinion on, uh, I know you're uh, talking about radio stations. What do you think of WKGR up in Palm Beach? I don't get to hear much of Palm Beach radio because uh, I'm still living in Dade County. I'm in the process of moving. Yeah. And uh, well, I'm not in the process of moving. I'm in the process of looking for a place to move to. So uh, I, I don't get to hear that much it's a of good station, radio. Good sounding yeah. station. Yeah, I know the bird has high compliments. For I've it. always I've always liked them. Yeah. yeah, yeah. It seems like they play good music and all that, and they're not full of a bunch of BS and all that. Yeah, and the amazing part of it is you can recognize all the music that they're playing. There are no um, no none of those marginal cuts that some people are so famous for. Like Mr. Breeze by Leonard Skinner at some weird station. Mm -hmm. uh, Tom, or Strange Brew. Tom, I was yeah. going to ask you. You know, I've heard talk what. They're coming out with a movie this summer, Batman the movie. Yeah. And I was wondering, do you think they're going to be bring back the old Batman series just because of I I kind of doubt it. I think, that, well, I was going to say it's high camp. Of course, the TV series was too. But this is a big budget picture. There's some big name stars in there. Is Warren Beatty in that or some some yeah. big name is in that though? Uh, I heard Jack, Jack Nicholson. Nicholson. Jack Nicholson. Yeah, I know the whole and and they're a big big supporting cast too. Uh, that kind of thing can go either way. I don't think that's going to be a mediocre hit. That's either going to go through the roof or, or it's going to be out of the theaters in two weeks like Ishtar. Yeah, or uh, talk radio. Yeah, yeah. Or talk radio. yeah. Well, yeah, but talk radio. Talk radio was never a commercial film. I mean, the, the subject matter was just too limited uh, where where Batman is at least in theory going to try to appeal to a wide-scale audience. Yeah. Still the greatest villain on Batman was the Joker. Cesar Romero. Yeah. Talk great. radio ought to be on cable any day now. Uh, I, can't <laughs> wait. Yeah, I can't wait. Okay, thank you. Thanks a lot. Bye. Yeah, let me know which service it's on. I'll cancel it before it comes on. <laughs> yeah. uh, Fort Lauderdale, hello. Yeah, hi. I have a, uh, a three quick questions for Tom. I know it's heading near the hour. Um, Tom, I was wondering if uh, you knew of any uh, agencies... Uh, uh, I know the major agencies like in L.A. and New York that handle scripts are like William Morris and Creative Artist Agencies. Are there any uh, branches in Florida now that uh, Florida has so much production over here? Any contact people? What, for technical people? No, for uh, submitting scripts that need agents. Uh, you'd have to get an agent first. No, well, I understand no that. No studio but... will accept an unsolicited script. No, I understand of... that, but uh, but there's so much bureaucracy of trying to get one out in L.A. or New York when you're when you're an author based in Florida. I, ju I just uh, don't know. Yeah, okay. Um, also, I was uh, wondering about Tattinger's. It just went off without a trace. Yeah, no, they, they're claiming they're going to bring it back as a half an hour with more of a comedic edge to it, uh, but I have my bad, doubts. Cause it, was a, it was a show that was just hitting its stride. Like uh, I, I disagree. I didn't think it ever hit its stride. I think it was a bad idea for a show. Uh, it didn't sound like a good idea when they announced it. The pilot was awful, and well, uh, I didn't see any development the, in the episode. The family atmosphere, the divorces and all that, and it was starting to, to pick up some family emphasis. Um, well, like, maybe that's how they'll bring it back, although I yeah. have my doubts that you'll ever see it. Okay, and, and one last question on the, uh, uh, the viewer discretion label uh, that so many of the ads run. Uh, 
Um, I used to think that meant uncut. You could turn in at 8 o'clock. Oh, no, not at all. I did a column on that two weeks ago. Oh, did you? Okay. Yeah. And as a matter of fact, you know, WSBN's a good example. They, they, they leave in a lot of TNA and movies and language, but uh, they, they still trim the movies by as much as a half an hour. And I always thought uncut meant something else. Anyway, that's uh, going to do it for today. Tom, thanks very much. As thank always, you. It was a real pleasure. Tom Jicka, the radio TV editor for the Fort Lauderdale News Sun Sentinel. And we thank Carmine for a great lunch from Flores, which uh, gave Tom a second breath for the last half sure of the did. show. It was magnificent. Delicious as food, too. Okay, stick around. Uh, Steve's coming along next. His guest today, Patrick Sessions, the father of Tiffany Sessions, the girl who's been missing since the 9th of February. And Wayne Black, the lead investigator in that case, uh, will also be a guest on the show. And then Sports Talk with Joe Zagacki and Sonny tonight at 6.05. Have yourselves a great day. We'll see you again tomorrow morning at 10 here on 610 WIOD.